Hello there, my name is Bruce Creations from Brankus Rain or something along those lines. Thank you for joining me on my stream today. I see, oh hello Dana, thank you for joining. Um, do you like my new music on my intro? Is the audio all okay? If you could just give me a thumbs up on the, uh, on the state or the condition of the audio um, that I am currently using at the moment. Um, uh, as usual, um, hello Nick Taylor. Um, as usual, everyone who is watching, welcome to the stream. Uh, please jump on and say hello, especially if you're a first timer. Um, always like to uh, to hear from folks. So uh, thank you again for joining. Um, I have uh, nice fancy new intro music for those who missed it. You'll have to. Oh look at this, Grudy. Thank you very much. Super chat. Bang. Um, okay, miss the music. My feed was still muted from Mac Yak. Oh. Oh, okay, Nick liked the audio. Okay, well, it, next time, next time, you just have to be there on the ready when it gets when it gets happening. So um, um, I've got a, as usual quite a lot of things on my plate here. Um, fixing wise, I actually just had someone come in today and drop in a Macintosh SE that has the display has collapsed down into a dot. So we've got to have a look at the analog board of that. I'm not sure if I'll do that today. I might do that in another stream um, because uh, uh, as I say, I already have sort of some stuff planned for this stream. Um, I have got yet another Macintosh LC575 board. I get quite a lot of these, very, very popular board. JJ Brubaker, thank you for joining. Um, so this is the LC575 board. Uh, it's been sent to me uh, completely empty. I've got a battery cover, but I haven't got any uh, RAM or FPU or cards or anything like that. Um, now, let me just have a quick look at the job ticket, and we will see what the problem is with this one. Um, um, okay, so this is... Uh, oh, well, this is a bit bright. Not that one. This one. Let's have a look at that. Right. Um, no, that's not the one. <laughs> I've got yet another one here. Uh, is it this one? This one. Okay. Uh, okay. So, okay. I better check this to the serial number to make sure I'm working on the right one. Um, do you do sorry about this this is uh, uh, no that one's already been done I am really confusing myself now I think what I've done is I've actually gone in and uh, and got uh, two of these muddled up um, did it do, which of course is uh, at the end of the day it's not a major issue because uh, it's not this one all right let me just check up on the chat while I continue figuring this stuff out. Jay, thank you for joining. Hello and welcome. What other board boards can be stuffed into a Color Classic? You can stuff pretty much any board that is this sort of size. Um, this is, um, uh, that can be an LC520, an LC550, an LC575, uh, a Color Classic 2. Mm, anything else? Um, I think that's probably it. Um, someone might correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's it. You just have to keep in mind that if it's something like an LC575, if you drop it in there, um, uh, it, uh, it won't necessarily work because these are outputting a 640 by 480 signal and the display is, um, the Color Classic display is 512 by 384. I think that number is right. So um, that's obviously what the Mystic upgrade is. So, um, all right. Um, Don Irving, thank you for joining. All right, let me see if I can figure this out. Um, I've got my lovely new job ticketing system here, and I need to see if it works. No, it doesn't. Well, some of it works, uh, but I just went to go search for a particular computer model, and that did not work. So, um, right, all right, okay. There's got to be in here somewhere. I know I've done it. Uh, oh, come on, what's going on here now? Right. 
All right, so why? It, it, it is, of course, possible that I haven't entered this into the system yet, um, it, which is, of course, um, my bad in a big way. Um, but let's recap it anyway, shall we? Oh, uh oh, oh, uh oh, black screen. <laughs> so I'm sure there were people in the chat saying to me, hey, I was staring at a black screen at the moment. Um, yeah, okay, so basically what happened there was I, um, I got quick keys that changed the, um, the, 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 uh, the view uh, in OBS, and I just happened to press uh, a button while doing a search, and it changed the view. So, <laughs> right, uh, JJ Brubaker, midday where I am. Midday where I, where I am as well. Um, okay, so what I have man managed to establish, I think without uh, any doubt here, is that this particular um, board, uh, I haven't actually entered into my job ticketing system yet, um, but I do know that it is a recapping job, and I really would have liked to have had um, uh, the information about it, because I'm pretty sure this was one. Oh, actually, no, I do remember this. I remember the conversation now. I do remember the conversation, but I obviously haven't entered into the system. I'll enter it into the system later. Um, but... Here's the, here is the thing, and this is the thing I want to see if I can illustrate in this. So when I spoke to the customer about this, uh, they said, oh, look, you know, I was having a problem. I think it was either not starting up or problem with the sound or something like that. One of the problems associated with these. So just as a quick reminder, with these things, when they have leaky capacitors on them, one of the first signs is usually uh, that the sound goes on them. So it's a very common thing uh, for that to happen. Now, um, what... Um, what this customer told me when he said this, he said, I've taken the board out and is a little bit of, little bit of grime around the caps, but I don't think it's actually too bad because I had a look at it and I took one look and it's like, man, you have got serious capacitor leakage going on. And he actually said, I didn't realize it was that bad. I said, well, look, I'm going to live stream it and I can sort of show you just how bad it is. Um, when I put it under the microscope. But I just want to see if I can, with a slightly different camera angle, and maybe a bit of a zoom in, just illustrate how bad this is and why. Look, I was immediately kind of saying, look, this thing is bad. So I'm just going to zoom in here. It, you, it's all about the lighting lighting angle. Okay, you... Whoop. Let me see if I can get it. I feel this this because it's... I'm just trying very hard. There we go. Can you see how it's all shiny all around all around the outside it's shiny, but then at this point here it kind of cuts off and goes matte. So that's all all this here, all around there, that's all leakage. So all of that stuff, this whole region around there where you know it's sort of it that should all be shiny, but it's completely totally matte. You can see it here as well. Uh, again, just trying to get that light catching on it in the right in the right at the right angle. Uh, having trouble, having trouble. There we go. You can see it there. You can see there's that dark smeary blob going all the way around there, and that's your capacitor leakage there. And so you know you can just glance at this board and go, oh yeah, it doesn't look too bad. But then you just catch it from the right angle when the light's bouncing off it. You can see, yeah, that's a lot of scunge there. Let's, uh, let's be sure. Uh-oh, we have a visitor. We have a visitor. This is becoming a habit, little chicken. Um, see if I can zoom out, we might be able to get a little chicken head in here. There we go, there's a chicken head. Hello, chicken. So I'm just going to become known as the bloody chicken guy, aren't I? I mean, this is crazy. What's going on? You're generally not welcome in a workshop. Are you? But you do like to make an appearance. I think this one's just getting used to, I think it's the, me coming out here and doing these live streams sort of become a bit of a routine for us as she comes in and says hello. Um, all right, so let's just have a little jump across to the microscope and we will have a look and see what that scunge looks like under the microscope. So you can see how it's sort of got this kind of glossiness going on here. And by the way, I mean, I know it's another LC575, and I know I've done LC575s before, many times before. Um, but um, hello to DK 
HL02, uh, speaking in a language that I don't understand. Um, hello to Michael Mullet. Thank you for joining. Um, now, look, just a quick shout out to everyone here. If there are people that are sort of concerned that um, if they're wanting to watch my streams and they're not getting notifications coming through, um, jump onto Facebook, go onto my Brankus Creations page of Facebook, go in and like the page because I always put notifications on my Brankus page when I am intending to stream. I usually try and give at least an hour's worth of notice. Sometimes it's a little bit less, but um, I am concerned and am not getting notifications. So this this is the thing that if you are if you are a Facebook user um, and if you go to Facebook and like the Brankus page, you, hopefully you will get a notification in Facebook when I'm actually doing the uh, uh, doing a stream. But yeah, we all know that the YouTube notifications are kind of weird. They're not. 100% reliable. I do try and get the message out via other means if I can, but it's just, you know, it's just how, how it is, unfortunately. Um, Jay is not getting notifications about notifications. Steve, hello, and welcome to the stream. I didn't actually see you there. I Look at that. You did a little Bernie message up there. Sorry, I missed that. Hello. Um, just a quick little shout out to... Uh, uh, to Steve, we uh, finally managed to talk him into buying an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, I have one sitting over here, which I'm not going to show you because it looks a bit grubby at the moment. Um, and he took delivery of his ultrasonic cleaner today and unfortunately doesn't work properly. So um, I, my sympathies go out to you, Steve. That is a real pain when you get something new like that and it doesn't work. So he's going to have to send it back and try and get another one. One of the issues with ultrasonic cleaners is that um, uh, there are really, really top of the line ones and they are sold as specialty equipment. You know, it's not like just going down and getting a toaster or a, or a um, you know, a kettle or something like that. These are sold as specialty equipment. They're sold to, you know, um, uh, mechanics and electronics places and all that. And for that reason, they get sold with a premium price tag if you buy a genuine one. The, on the bright side, there are what we like to refer to as Chinese knockoffs, and they are essentially a Chinese-made ultrasonic cleaner. And I have one. I've got one here. The brand is Vivor, V-E-V-O-R, uh, and it has been beaut. I have complaints about it. I have a few issues with it, but on the whole, it's been great, and it only cost me a couple of hundred dollars. Now, uh, Steve basically went and did the same thing. He went and bought a sort of a Chinese one and it almost works. The main problem with it is that it seems to be kind of partially on all the time rather than switching it off and on. So, so anyhow, um, I am planning to do a video in the not too distant future on the ultrasonic and nothing else. I might even record it this weekend and then I've just got to cut it together. And the reason for that is that I have been getting lots and lots and lots of questions about it. And I realized that in all the time that I've been using this thing, I have learned quite a lot about it, and I thought I really should put that into a, into um, um, a, um, into a yeah video and just go in and, and just you know sort of share some of that uh, some of that knowledge. Now, um, um, I the one thing I would say with these, if any, there were actually there's two things I want to say about the ultrasonic cleaners. Again, if anyone is thinking about the old ultrasonic cleaner. The first is that there seems to be a bit of a shortage at the moment. I've got a link in my description of where you can click on and go in and get an ultrasonic cleaner. And unfortunately, that link doesn't work at the moment. They don't have any. I think the only ones I've got are like one liter ultrasonic cleaners, which are fine if you want to clean a little bit of jewelry, but no good for cleaning sort of computer circuit boards. Um, as I say, mine is a 10 liter one. And, and that's, so that's a little bit frustrating um, because if you are looking to buy one at the moment, don't ask me, it's probably a COVID thing I'm assuming it's a COVID thing, but there just don't seem to be the same supply of ultrasonic cleaners out there as there used to be. So, uh, oh, Molto, not, is it Nito or Nitho or Nitho, Nito, Molto Nito, Nito, Molto Nito. Dang late to another stream. Hi, Bruce. Hi, y'all. It's all right. I've just been waffling most of this time, so I'll just uh, continue waffling. And yeah, you really haven't missed anything particularly interesting. Oh, Fizzbin, hello. Uh, Paul Nicholas, hello. Uh, okay, so I better just catch up on the chat. So I've been talking. Uh, 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 cleaner that holds a logic board. Yeah, well, Paul Nicholas, what I would say to you is what size logic board do you want it to hold? That's the very important thing because they vary in size. You know, I mean, you've got, you've got 
logic boards. And you've got, where's the big one? Oh, here's the big one. We've got a big one here. He's got a big one. And you've got logic boards. Now, you're going to spend a lot of money on an ultrasonic cleaner that holds this one. Uh, even in two halves far out. I mean, this is a monster. Look at it. So that's a Quadra 900, by the way, if you're curious. Um, if it's missing a few of these, so this has got some trace damage under here. This is an ongoing project, and we are going to return to this one day when I've got nothing else to do. So, But at the moment, that is not the time. At the moment, I have lots to do. I'm getting, oh, I don't know, probably somewhere in the vicinity of a, 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 like one inquiry a day, I guess, for, for recapping jobs. Getting quite a few inquiries coming through from the US too at the moment. There is someone who is planning to send me three boards from uh, from the US, so that's going to be interesting. I'll probably live stream those. Um, so, so yeah, just, just to reiterate the situation with Steve's one, what I believe it is. So for people that aren't aware of ultrasonic cleaners, they are basically a big bath of liquid. Um, with a detergent inside, and then they get bombarded by low frequency, or is it high frequency, low frequency sound, high frequency, high frequency sound. It's at around but somewhere between 20 and 40 hertz, I think, from memory. Um, and it's outside of our hearing range, um, for the most part. And when it travels through water, it actually creates little voids in the water. This is a process called cavitation. And that makes these microscopic little bubbles, tiny weeny little bubbles that actually burst and let off a huge amount of heat and energy at that time. And when they do that, they help clean very, very fine surfaces. They don't do much, you know, or they don't do damage. They're very, very delicate cleaners, um, but they're very, very effective. And so they're great, you know, people like in cars, they use them for cleaning um, injector nozzles for, you know, sort of fuel injected vehicles because they're very, very fine. They're very delicate. You can put it in an ultrasonic cleaner. You can clean a very, very small little, you know, sort of uh, nozzle in a in a, in a um, fuel injector, and uh, um, and you know, not do any damage. So, um, so the um, just buy a crest already? No, no. Unless someone wants to buy a crest for me. Um, so yeah. So just just following that up, Quadra 950. Yeah, no. You will end up spending a lot of money for an ultrasonic cleaner for a Quadra 950. Unfortunately, what happens with all of these, in particular these cheaper model of ultrasonic cleaners, when you go up in size, what they generally do is they just kind of go incrementally wider. They don't go deeper. And a board like that, in order for you to keep getting wider and wider and wider to put that in, I mean, I hate to think how big it's going to be. And you'll end up with a massive cleaner. You know, um, what would be great would be like a long, thin cleaner, like a toaster that you can put a board in. Now, there are cleaners like that, but Crest make them. But even still, they're still not the right size for a, um, for a Quadra 900 or 950 board. I can't even get half of a 950 board in that. I'd get maybe the corner. So, uh, 2CI sized is fine. Uh, I can do a 2CI, and that's also the same size as a 2VI, 2VX, Quadra 700, uh, 840AV, 800, they're all around about the same size and I can do them in here in two halves. It's not ideal, but it does work. It does have the same effect. It gets the job done. So just saying this one, this size one, a 10 litre will do an 840 AV board in two halves. So, um, oh, and a, sorry, yeah, two CI board. All right, so just, um, I'll just continue here. Uh, for the beer, okay, uh, what do we got? Um, Oh, Crudy, hello, thank you for joining. Um, you actually, you already, yeah, okay, you came right at the beginning and gave me a, a, a super chat. Thank you very much for that. Um, I've already said hello to you, so I won't say hello again. Um, okay, uh, tanks are always small. Yes, the tanks are always smaller than they claim. Now, that's an interesting one because I'm not, I wonder whether they are. I mean, yes, they probably are. So mine is a 10 litre. There's, I, you don't put 10 litres of liquid in that. I probably put, seven liters in it now you can't fill them right to the top you absolutely cannot fill them up to the top because you know you're just going to put something in there and it'll spill over you leave about an inch you know of of not fillage at the top so um and um this is turning into an ultrasonic stream isn't it mm. um and uh the the bath in them um is uh, okay, the bath in them, the tub, is uh, shaped 
like that. It does, it's not straight at the sides, it comes in slightly. Now, because it's smaller at the bottom than it is at the top, when you fill it up, it, you know, you, you get rid of quite a lot, you know, you, like it, it seems to fill up really quickly and you get to like five litres and a 10 litre and you think, this thing's nearly full. I wonder whether if you did fill it right to the very, very, very top, you know, whether it would be exactly 10 litres. It might be. I've never tested that. Um, Charlie, hello. Thank you for joining. So, um, yeah. So anyhow, I just, um, I, you know, I just thought I would mention all these things um, that if you are sort of looking for, a, you know, for an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning is that these have, inter they have built-in heaters in them. And you can switch them on, you set them to the temperature you want, and then it, it keeps that temperature regulated. So, you know, if it goes above the temperature, the heater turns off. If it goes below the temperature, the heater turns on, which is great. But the heaters are abysmally slow. When you fill this up with liquid, it probably takes at least two hours to heat this, uh, heat this whole bath up, possibly even more. So I kind of often come out here and I switch it on in the morning and I go and do stuff and then I come back and, and, and then clean with it. I have since bought myself a little immersion heater that I can drop in there to try and speed that process up. So, uh, Matt, hello. Um, I don't think I said hello to you already. No, I didn't. Yeah, okay. So, um, all right, so anyhow, that's enough about the ultrasonic cleaner. But as I say, the main reason I wanted to mention it is because I've been getting quite a lot of questions about the ultrasonic cleaner through various means. And the link in my description at the moment does not go to the cleaner that I have. Uh, it goes to like some 0.8 litre one because they don't have any 10 litre ones in stock. I need to try and find another supplier that's got, you know, ones that match this one close enough that I can say, yeah, go and grab that one. So I've just got to go in and do that. So that's kind of, that's the, the, the issue I wanted to bring up with the ultrasonic cleaner. Right. So let's continue. We've got this Macintosh LC575 board. And what we've already established is that it has some really bad capacitor leakage. Uh, initially, at a glance, you look at it and you think, you know, it's not too bad. But of course, when I just held that at that angle there, you could see the smears all over it. I got, I got that angle perfect. And then I can't get it back again. Because, because why? Because, because why? Come on. Anyhow, I've done it before. So let's not worry about that. So it, it, at a glance, it doesn't look too bad, but it has some very bad leakage. Then when we jump in and we do the microscopy, we can very clearly see this goop going on here. Um, now, as I said, I've, I've stupidly haven't entered this into my um, uh, my ticketing system, which I'm, I'm feeling pretty stupid about. Um, so I don't actually have the notes on of this about what the customer said about it. But it it either went that the thing didn't start or it has no sound. It's one of those two. But um, Okay, so, and then if we have a look on, on this side here of the sound chip, you can actually see there's some darkening going on here. You can see how there's like this little ring of dark going on there. And that's, uh, that's showing the signs of some, uh, uh, some corrosion of those traces. Uh, yes, this board is a 575, and I'll see 575 as per the uh, video description. Um, I may work on some other things later on as well. I have got a Color Classic that I have gone in and I have uh, Mystic upgraded. I did a, a stream of me at Mystic upgrading that, and I and and everything, and I've, I've you know done a few little things to it, adjusted the geometry. When I was testing it, it was getting all sorts of little flickery stuff on the screen. So I want to have a look at that analog board. I want to uh, clean up the, um, um, uh, you know, the, all the solder joints, see if there are any solder joints that are cracked or looking nasty, and probably put a little bit of uh, lubricant into the little potentiometers, the little trim pots that go in and do the, um, the adjustments for the, the display. Because when I was doing one adjustment in particular, I was getting a lot of flickering. So it's either that there's cracked solder joints on that little pot on the board, or there's some corrosion inside that pot. So uh, this one has a fair amount of gunge as well as scunge. It does indeed. So just once again, for those who are new to the stream, uh, there are two words that I use fairly regularly to describe these things, gunge and scunge. Gunge, G-U-N-G-E, gunge is a dry sort of buildup, buildup of corrosion. Scunge is a wet sort of buildup of cor and corrosion. So what we're looking at here at the moment is scunge. 
right there. You can see the wetness of it. It's scunge. Uh, didn't see an 040. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to go. Oh, you're right. You didn't. This is a an else. Oh, look, now I'm really confused. Because <laughs> what I'm actually looking at here at the moment is a Color Classic board. So, okay. This is why I couldn't find it in the job ticket. Because it's not an L, it's not an LC575 at all. It's a Color Classic. Wow. Okay. So, we have two options here at the moment. And I'm going to put it forward to the chat and let everyone decide what they want to do. So, now... I can go in here and I can have a look <laughs> at the job ticket and here is the explanation. Boy, oh boy, I'm having a great morning, aren't I? Oh my God, it's ruined. Um, okay, my Color Classic doesn't power on at all when the logic board is installed. Once I remove the logic board, the machine powers on with just the fan running, which is normal. If you power on a Color Classic without the um, without the analog the logic board installed as long as the analog board is all working, it will the fan will will run. It'll you know sort of run at full tilt. So I'm guessing the logic board requires a clean and a recap. Provided a link to a picture of the board below. Please let me know if you can help me fix this. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, yes, of course I can. So um, let's just look past my complete and total stuff up here, and you guys tell me what you would like to see. We have here a Macintosh Color Classic. There's our little CPU with uh, 16, 16 megahertz, 68030. Uh, I can recap this Color Classic and we can do this and we can just pretend that I never said LC575 in the description and I'll rename it at a later date. That's option number one. So one, that's one. Option number two, two. I do actually have an LC575 board that I can recap. It's my own never been recapped does need recapping if people would prefer it, there's nothing wrong with the other board though my lc575 works beautifully so it can be recapped so option number two is for me to go up and get that lc575 board and recap it so here for the, the chat the choices are out there one for the color classic that doesn't work here two for the lc575 that i have up inside that does work so if you're super keen as mustard to see a 575, um, whichever has more caps. <laughs> okay, so one for Color Classic, two for LC575. And just a reminder that if you do go with option two, you're going to have to sit and watch this for a couple of minutes while I go up inside the house. Well, when, like a minute. But at least I have music now for, for when I leave. See, if I go away, I can do this. You watch, you ready? This is going to be fancy. <laughs> Fancy or not, eh? Mm -hmm. Okay, so far we have three votes for one. We've had no votes for uh, two. So at the moment, um, the classic's winning. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. That guy, Chad, thank you uh, very much. Oh, I don't think I said hello to you, so hello. Thank you for joining. Uh, uh, just to uh, mention, we currently have 21 concurrent viewers. <coughs> Got up a little bit more there and then people left they must have left as soon as they saw that um, this wasn't an lc575 they've just gone oh no um okay well look at this stage without any other um without any other oh look we, uh, steve's gone for it i see what steve's done I, I steve's made a little bit of a joke worthy of a teenager <laughs> um all right, okay. Um, so far at this stage, I have three votes for the Color Classic, so I may as well just go in and do this, shall I? Seeing as it is the one that has problems and we do need to fix it. Now, one of the reasons why these generally have problems with starting up is because this sound chip just... Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. This sound chip just here. I'm going to zoom in. I'm not zoomed in the right place. Where's my... There's my little dot. This is my dot. Shows approximately where center is. Okay, that's a sound chip right there, right in the middle of these capacitors, getting all that leakage on it. This sound chip is involved in the startup, uh, in the start of the computer, in terms of the in the schematic. Uh, I don't know exactly what role it plays, but it does play a role. So, uh, um, so 
Uh, it is very common for this sound chip, if it's not working, if it's damaged, or if it's just clogged up with um, capacitor juice, uh, that you won't get a uh, you won't get it to start up. So chances are that the, uh, cleaning this and getting replacing the caps will make it work. So um, yes, this is Don Irving. You are exactly right. We all get older. We don't always grow up. That's so true. So true, pro. Um, okay, so right. So, well, I'm going to start taking these caps off. Uh, I mean, unless people just voice some huge objection, because I can always do five seven five as well. Need doing. Um, I've got to get the uh, these caps off, and as usual, when I uh, am going to get them off with hot air, I use these little blades, these little uh, metal blades, snap off type blades, to uh, use as heat shields, and then I get a couple of little springies like this. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit close up here, aren't I? These little springs, and I hook them over here, and I do it like that. Um, just a, a quick little mention. I was chatting to someone yesterday. I cannot remember his name, and for that reason, I apologise. Uh, who has a problem with a Macintosh Classic not working, um, and they have uh, been trying to clean it to get it working. Um, a very important Thing to mention is that cleaning it is only half of the problem. Cleaning it may well get it working again because it may well be the electrolyte on the board causing the problem. But why is the electrolyte there in the first place? It's there because your capacitors are failing. So yes, cleaning can often be a solution, but you know, it's a short-term solution. It is not a long-term. It's not something where you say, oh, I'm just going to clean this every six months and I've got a working computer. You've got to replace the caps. It has to be done. So anyhow, just wanted to make mention of that because I, I, I sort of felt like uh, this particular person was saying that just cleaning it every now and again is a real option. And it's, it's kind of not. Um, okay. And imagine you sort of cut yourself really badly and the blood was pouring out of you. It's just like cleaning up the blood. It's not like actually trying to stop you, stop you from bleeding. That's a terrible analogy, but, you know. Um, okay, I don't need the soldering on. I need the hot air station and some tvacers. Um As usual, when I'm doing these, I apply some hot air to these caps, these ugly, nasty caps. And I've got a timer going off. Stop. It's time for me to hang out the washing. And... Oh man, this stinks. <laughs> oh, Pong. Pong. Oh, far out. This is. Uh... Yuck. That just reeks. I mean, they all smell, but I mean, some of them smell worse than others. Ugh. Um, I have a question. The floppy drive in my Color Classic doesn't work in the computer. I fully restored the drive, and it works fine in another computer, but not in the Color Classic. When you say it doesn't work, can you tell me what, I mean, is it completely dead? Do you put a disk in there and it tries to read it, and it just, it says, you know, this can't be read, um, you know, do you wish to initialize something along those lines? Um, so, uh, yeah, just... Um, I'd just like to get a clarification on what you mean by doesn't work. The, I'm just trying to remember of the Color Classic. Color Classic. Um, yeah, I'm just, I've never had that. So I'm afraid I'm not a great deal of help, but obviously um, I, the first question I would always ask about a Color Classic is has it, uh, has it been recapped? Because, you know, anything could potentially go wrong with those if they haven't had the caps replaced. Um, could it be an issue with the floppy control? It's actually that's you, Charlie. Sorry, um, I just I was reading that and didn't even realise it was you asking. Uh, could it be an issue with the floppy control? It certainly could. Um, just yeah, okay. The drive doesn't do anything at all. Oh, okay. Totally dead. So like no power getting to it at all. Um, is that some issue too? I haven't recapped it yet. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that's an interesting one. Um, if it's not getting power at all, um, look, there are. There are lots of, I mean, so the floppy drive connects to the little 
connector that um, that this plugs plugs into. So obviously, when you plug this into your computer, so the floppy stuff is coming out of one of these. I don't know which one. You could obviously look at the schematic and find out which one of these pins is doing all that. Um, but if it's not doing anything, the chances are it's not getting any power at all, no voltage at all. So I mean, it could be an issue with some of these pins. I mean, it could be the the the, the cable. I mean, there are lots of things along the way. But if you're absolutely certain that that floppy drive works, um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's you kind of have to sort of trace it back from the source, I suppose. You think it may be getting power, okay? And putting it in a startup. When oh, okay, when putting in a startup disk, the disk will eject. That's definitely getting power. That's getting twelve volts. It won't be able to eject it without twelve volts. So. Uh, um, yeah, okay, well, that's something else. Yes, look, it could definitely be the floppy controller. Um, I don't even know where that is on this. I'm sure I could find it with a schematic, but you know, somewhere here. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. But uh, there, I can't tell you much more than that, unfortunately. My apologies for that, Charlie. Uh, okay, uh, okay, drag and drag around, try and put in second 2C. I bought in the dishwasher and didn't work. Uh, I think it may be getting okay. So, um, Michael, the important thing to keep in mind with the two CI, uh, I don't have one here, unfortunately, so I can't sort of show one, show one off. I have one up in uh, up in the house, but um, if you are holding the logic board in front of you, if you're facing it up at the top right hand corner of it, you would find the power button, um, and directly below that power button. There are a couple of capacitors there, and then below that, there are a couple of little, I think, diodes there. And uh, that whole section is the startup circuit. And because there are electrolytic capacitors in that area, it's really, really common for the traces to get damaged in that area and affect the startup circuit. Interestingly enough, you can usually still use those two CIs if you could ultimately force the power on and I can do that I've got a power supply here that just delivers full power to the board no matter what the startup circuits doing and I've had situations where I've had a board that I can power up and work and use with that power supply if I then use the original power supply that requires the startup circuit you press the button it doesn't work so it's that region if we were looking at this if this was a 2ci board and it's not but if we, if it was a 2ci board it's this region here. Your power button would be there, and it's this little region around here where the startup circuit is. And you just need to inspect that area really, really closely. It could, of course, also be the power supply. They do have a tendency to fail as well. Um, so, but you, the only way you can really test that is with a known good power supply, or try that power supply on another computer that you know works. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's that. The common thing with a two CI is that little startup circuit just down down near the power button. Um, Putting uh, um, logic boards in the dishwasher, I realize a lot of people do it. I realize why they do it, and a lot of people have been very happy with doing it. Um, it's not something that I recommend, and it's not necessarily because I think the, it's a harsh clean. I mean, don't use dishwashing detergent. That stuff is really abrasive, so don't use that. Um, you know, it's generally just the heat and the excuse me, the heat and the water in the dishwasher you're using. But the problem is that um, there are lots of kind of little contaminants in tap water and um, what can often end up happening is when you get that board out uh, you've still got that water on there and even after drying it off some of those contaminants can be left behind and they can aid in corrosion over time so that's the only reason why I would recommend against using a dishwasher it's a relatively minor reason one thing you could potentially do to get around that is if you do put it in the dishwasher once you take it out of the dishwasher rinse it thoroughly in distilled water. So don't go and buy, you know, sort of a couple of bottles of distilled water or whatever. Get a little plastic container. I use like a, one of these little plastic storage bins that are behind me over there, these sorts of little plastic storage bins, and I just fill them up about that high. I actually use isopropyl alcohol, but you can use distilled water. And what you're wanting to do is wash away that tap water with the distilled water and then let it dry, dry it with a dry it with a hair dryer or dry it in the oven on a, on a low temperature, something like that. So uh, anyhow, that's, that's just sort of uh, something I wanted to mention about the whole dishwashing thing. A lot of people do it. Um, and it's, it, I don't 
you know, I, I can't really fully condone using a dishwasher, but if you are going to use one, that's what I would recommend doing afterwards. So, uh, um, okay, um, right. All right, okay, so I'm going to continue now. I've only taken two capacitors off, so this is now well on the way to being one of my slowest recapping ever. Uh, Bernadette is back to say hello. Uh, let's see if she is going to actually come in and join the stream here. Um, for anyone who has joined just recently and you're wondering who Bernadette is, no, it's not my wife, it's not my girlfriend, it's my chicken, which is currently walking behind the monitor. And hello. And I'd really rather she didn't walk behind the monitor because those cables are a little bit loose and I might suddenly just lose display. So can you please move Bernadette? Oh, here she comes. Where, where are we going? Are we come through here? Come on. Just where I just don't want you there. Just be on that side or that side, but don't be there. Come on. Oh, there goes the display. Okay, excuse me just a minute. Oh, it came back on again. All right, I'm going to have to get this chicken. Excuse me for a sec. Uh, up we go. All right. All right. So, as usual, this one likes to get on the camera. So we're just going to say a quick hello to Bernadette. Hello, Bernadette. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Uh, say hello to all your fans out there. Um, quickly, please. Um, yeah, you're about to jump off, aren't you? And then I'm going to put you on your way. Uh, on your way. On your way. On your way. Bye. Okay. There we go. It's not a complete Branker stream without a chicken in, is it? I mean, you know. All right, so we've got one little capacity here we're going to whip out. A little bit of heat shield going on around there. Let's make sure we've got them in focus. You can see some green around one of those uh, contacts there. Very common to get green. Green is the colour of corroding copper. This is a little tiny cap. This is a 10 microfarad 16 volt. And it's currently sitting underneath the... Pop. It's sitting underneath the socket for an FPU. What's an FPU, I hear you say? Well, you probably don't, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, it's a floating point unit. It is a math coprocessor. It is a chip specifically designed for crunching numbers. And uh, as this was a kind of a low cost type uh, computer, it was sold with the FPU as an option to upgrade rather than just having one as standard. If you were to buy an SE30, for example, you would actually have an FPU already installed. Or a uh, 2CI. Not sure about the 2CX, can't remember. But um, these days, if you want to buy yourself a math co-pressor processor chip, it is a Motorola 68882 FPU, and you need to buy it in a PLCC um, chip carrier, which stands for plastic plastic lid lid chip carrier. Um, they're very very cheap. I bought five recently for I don't know. Geez, it was probably less than twenty bucks. I don't know. It's, you know. So uh, yeah. So uh, if you're wondering what advantage you get from having a floating point. Um, chip in there? Probably none. But with them being so cheap, why not put them in? Why have a gap on your board? That's what I say. Um, okay, so... About watching those black plastic bases turn to hamburger, yes. Oh uh, dear. Uh, get a few more here. So these are the two 100 microfarad 6.3 volt capacitors. Uh, as I say, there are only two of them on here. I've gone out of focus, sorry. And that is these there. This one looks like he's about to blow. Whoop, look at me, I'm melting the serial number. Can't be having that. 
Ba -ba -bum -bum. I'm so glad that I did actually find this entered into my system. For those who might have missed it at the beginning, I uh, I put uh, there we go. Just want to. I don't I don't like melting serial numbers. I mean I know they're not particularly important in the grand scheme of things, but you know I just like to try and protect as much as possible. Um, oh God, what was I saying? I've totally lost my thread now. I can't remember, it probably wasn't important. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, yeah, so this is, it is something I did want to mention. Um, I just realised, if you have just joined this stream, uh, first of all, hello, welcome to the stream. The second thing I want to say is, in case you're wondering why I'm working on a colour classic, and not working on a an LC575, it's because I completely stuffed up. I thought what I had to do today was an LC575, and then when I brought it down here, I'm like, this isn't an LC575. This is a Color Classic. But, uh, I was happy I found, yes, I was happy I found the order ticket. I was happy that I had actually done the right thing here. Not so happy with what heat is doing to this, but uh, that's all right. We're all good. We're all good. We're looking good. Ah, ah. My desk tilts slightly towards me. I, obviously not by much, but enough so that anything on this desk that is round rolls off and onto me. And it drives me bonkers. <laughs> so next week, so we've got the uh, is it next week? I think we've got the worldwide developer conference for Apple. And so I think it, it, the keynote happens at three a.m. mine time. So I probably won't be watching it. I might have to watch it on the rerun. It's a shame. I would have liked to have watched it. That was a big one. All righty. All righty. Okay. Why does Bruce always get the grossest computers? Because I'm lucky. Uh, there, there is actually a really good reason why I get the grossest computers, actually, and that is that, as you may or may not be aware, I occasionally do videos teaching people how to do this themselves. And so a lot of people do actually try and do this themselves. So they just save me the ones that they can't do themselves. They save me the ones that, that are really, really cruddy and awful. Isn't that nice? It's, it's, I mean, it's kind of true. I mean, all the virtually, well, not virtual, but certainly several of the boards I have here at the moment are really problematic. Even after recapping, they're not working, that sort of thing. So Apple introducing the LC, what is that, 26? How good would that be? Well, I would love that. Uh, with a, I don't know, 68090 CPU or something like that. Um, so this here, uh, up in this corner, just going to jump across to this camera. Again, this is a little tip for anyone who has, I'll just bang the screen. Anyone who has a, um, uh, a color classic um, a board. Uh, over here, just below the ADB ports, there's a little flat chip here. I believe that is called the CUDA chip or something along those lines. Uh, that is also a common failing point with these computers that won't start up. And as you saw from that last little bit of video uh, on the microscope, there is a lot of gunge and scunge around that chip. Um, typically, if your computer is dead as, so in other words, if you put this in and you press the power button, you get absolutely nothing at all. It can be this guy here. Um, so, yeah. If you're getting other problems like pressing the button and it kind of, the green light comes on but you don't get a chime, uh, you get stuck with a white screen or something like that, that is usually the sound chip causing the problem. Tom Barber, hello, thank you for joining. I'm just going to have a little quick check, check here. I've got 24 viewers. My apologies for a slightly later start than usual today. I would have liked to have started a little bit earlier, um, but I had someone who had uh, 
booked in time uh, with me to drop a computer off for repair and I wanted to be able to greet them and talk to them about their computer and all that sort of stuff and be nice and polite and chatty. Um, and so I had to just um, postpone uh, this a little bit. So, yeah, that's just how it goes. Right, so all of the caps are off this now. So we've got that lovely cleaning job to do. Um, and as usual, that cleaning job involves me uh, adding flux. Funky flux to all the grubbiness. I just want to get the uh, focus synchronized here because what often happens is I get I get the uh, focus right for my eyes, but it's not right on the camera. And I can actually get it right with both if I want to. So let me just get that right there. That looks pretty in focus to me, doesn't it? Yeah. And then I get this. And I do a twiddle, and I get this, and I do a twiddle, and then we are cooking with gas. There we go. Um, right, so I've added some flux here. Um, do I need to do the whole what is flux thing, or does everyone here know what flux is? If anyone would like me to explain what flux is, just jump on and I'll do it. I don't mind doing it. Um, Going to add some new solder or solder, depending on which part of the world you're from, or if you'd like me to say it with my silly American accent, I can add solder. Um, okay, so, and then I've added some new stuff. I am grabbing some wick here, as I'm almost out of wick. Got to put that on the shopping list. Um, and I'm cleaning up all of that old and new solder as well as very gently rubbing those um, those pads. <laughs> Jay, Jay knows what it is. Jay knows what the fuck it is. I'm not going to answer it for, for Jay. I'm going to do my um, sort of American YouTuber thing. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for joining. Don't forget to hit the like button. And smash that subscribe. Okay. Then we need to just this that's just dust there. Nothing nothing particularly harmful about that. That's just good old fashioned dust. Living between two little cereal chips there. So that's for that cereal port. And that's for that cereal port. So, yippee. Um, I can give you a clue what that one is. See if you can guess what the purpose of that chip is. <laughs> the clue is in the name. All right, so we've got a couple more here that we're going to clean up. American accent is so unnatural, it's hilarious. Yes, it is that. It is that. It is definitely very unnatural. Um, okie dokie. Do -do -do. <sighs> Do -do -do -do. Now, it would be, for my US friends, it would be Friday evening from memory. I think that would be correct, because it is Saturday morning here for me. So I hope people uh, who are currently in their Friday evening, it's probably might even be getting close to Saturday morning by now, um, I hope everyone is uh, enjoying themselves and letting their hair down and maybe having a couple of uh, little glasses of something alcoholic. Assuming, of course, you're old enough to do so. If you're not, then you shouldn't. Um, and in particular for my uh, US friends, where I believe the legal age in a lot of states is 21. Well, it's actually 18 here. Because we as Australians are deemed more responsible. <laughs> no, that's not true. Okay, cleaning, cleaning. 
This one here, uh, with, despite all the leakage, these pads really aren't that bad. Uh, if I was looking at this, say, as a Macintosh SE30, where they go in and they get that, um, uh, they get that really hard, crusty sort of um, gunge sort of crust on the outside, they take a lot more to clean. Because this is still quite wet, quite moist, that, that leakage is, is all still, you know, quite, quite moist. Moist. Um, it becomes, it, it, these, these pads are a lot easier to clean up. If this was left longer, it would get a lot harder to clean. All good reasons for going and getting these things done sooner rather than later. Ten fifty-five p.m. in CT. Which one's CT? Uh, CT. CT. Is that what? Like Connecticut or something? I don't know. I'm terrible. I know the. I know the. The a few of them, but there. You guys have got all like 50, 50 something. Two. Yeah, Connecticut. Okay, yeah. Fifty-two states, something like that. I mean, we've only got like seven. It's really easy. <laughs> um, so, uh, I mean, I you know I know the names of the states. So often, if I see the two letters, I can usually figure out which one it is. But uh, yeah. And the only postcode I know is nine zero two one zero. Okay. I am nearly out of my yucky flux. For those who uh, might have been following the story, I got given some free flux, and it's awful. And so I use this for the cleaning. It's fine for cleaning, but if I'm doing the soldering, I want the nice flux. So, um, <laughs> okay. Well, I'm glad I'm not. Uh, I'm not the only one that doesn't know all the abbreviations. As I say, with us, we've basically got uh, New South Wales, where I am, and then we have Victoria, and we have Queensland, and we have uh, South Australia, Western Australia, Northern Territory, Australian Capital Territory, and did I say Tasmania? Tasmania is the little, the little triangle down the bottom. Uh, cold, cold place. Far too close to the uh, uh, to the uh, Antarctic for my liking. I much prefer to be a little bit closer to the uh, tropical region. I'm not a big fan of the cold, that's for sure. I am loving how easy this is to clean. This is fantastic. Okay. So I think, I think that's probably it. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oh, actually, I forgot the little one. The one little one in here. Hey, little guy. It's south, south is warmer. It, uh, yeah, it, 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 it depends where you, you start and finish, doesn't it? So it gets, you know, if we start from the very, very top... It goes cold, and then it gets warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer and warmer, and then it gets to the hottest bit in the middle, and then it goes down, and then starts getting cooler and cooler and cooler, and then it gets bloody cold again at the bottom. So, and of course, having said that, we are. We're in winter here at the moment, so this is not my favourite time of the year. Um, other people will disagree with me because where I am gets insanely hot at times. Um, I'm just going to have a little look-see at this. I don't like the look of that. See how dark that is. Um, I want to give that a little bit of a scrapey scrape. <laughs> Next Jimmy saying the world isn't flat. That's crazy. 
Um, okay. Right, so essentially with when you have a, a situation like this, you just want to make sure that that bit of copper on the outside is making contact with a little copper tube that runs through there. The copper tube is called a via, and the via, the purpose of a via is to join up traces in between layers of a computer, of a circuit board, motherboard, logic board, board. Um, and obviously you can see the layer on the top of this. You can see the layer if you flip it over and look at the bottom, but there are actually layers in the middle as well. And I have an example of that just here, if anyone ever wants to see. I have here a very, very badly damaged Macintosh classic board. And I one day, just for a bit of fun, decided to cut through the board. And if you have a look there, you can see the different layers. You've got a layer on the top, you've got a layer on the bottom, and then you've got these two other layers that are sandwiched. And there's, there's probably a, a layer right in the middle as well, but there's just no copper in that particular location. So this is a Macintosh Classic, which has, uh, I am guessing, I don't know for 100% certain, that it has five layers of copper in it. And that's what those vias do. They, tra they send electricity from one layer to another layer. Um, and, uh, and when I have corrosion like that, I just want to make sure that the copper on the top has got contact with that little copper tube or via. Because if it doesn't, it ain't gonna work. Now I'm gonna just get some uh, solder on that. I'll get my, uh, I'm a little bit close there. I'll get my, uh, my wick and I'll use that to just gently rub and coat this with solder. It needs a bit more flux. Flux is magic. Magic flux. Da -da -da. And then the next thing I'm going to do is grab my multimeter. I will put it on beepity beep mode. For those that aren't aware, that is also sometimes called by layman's continuity mode. Um, but us tech guys, we call it beepity beep mode. So what I want to do is I just want to quickly grab this board. I want to flip it over. I want to make sure that I'm actually getting um, continuity between that pad I'm going to need my goggles. Where am I? Where am I seeing things? Here we are. Ah, my stupid eyes. Okay, so I'm going to pop that there. Whoopsie. Where's it come out, you reckon? I hate that. In there. About there. I think it might be right there next to C78. Yep. We're all good. So even though that was looking a little bit nasty, I've just cleaned it up a little bit. It's definitely sending power through to the other side of the board. So everyone is happy. Well, may not be, but yeah. Um, start using some of these Q-tips that I've got lying around on the uh, table here that are only half used. Okay, that's the last one. All clean. Let's just have a quick little uh, catch up here. Uh, I love the heat, but I, uh, but I don't want to cook myself either. Yeah, look, it's a fine line. I mean, we over here around sort of spring and autumn, I and mean, we, we can get some lovely, lovely weather. Uh, but our summers are getting rather insanely hot now. Um, for uh, anyone who, you know, I'm assuming you are someone who works in a, uh, a Fahrenheit type situation. I don't know exactly what the conversion is, but it is quite common for us to get 45 degree Celsius days here now and that's that's pretty unbearably hot that's you know you, you can't really do much in 45 degrees about 120 or something like that somewhere thereabouts uh, you put some kind of mask over that after ultrasonic cleaning um, oh yes UV solar mask that is correct I do put UV solar mask on it, which comes in a tube, but I have taken mine out of a tube and put it into this little tin, this little metal tin. And the reason why I put it in a metal tin rather than like a little glass jar is because the stuff is UV sensitive and this way it protects it from light. And this is just this green sponge that I paint on with a fine little paintbrush and that just coats it and, uh, uh, and it dries hard under UV light. Uh, keeps it protected from the elements and all that sort of stuff and helps protect any repairs you do, all that sort of stuff. 113 Fahrenheit for 45, there you go. So, as I say, that's pretty, uh, pretty uncomfortable weather. 
after though, not now. Now, I don't do it now. Um, the reason is that I've still got some residual flux and stuff on there. Look, I could do it now, but I would need to spend a lot of time cleaning it with um, the, um, uh, the um, what did you call this stuff? Alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, or ISO, as we sometimes call it. Um, I would have to spend a lot of time cleaning that to get all of the residual, residual flux off, get that surface squeaky clean. Because if I put the solder mask on and there's flux underneath it, it's not going to adhere, adhere properly. It's just going to peel off. So I've got to get the perfectly clean. Then, of course, it does need to dry as well. Now, if the sun is beaming outside, I can put the board in the sun and I will generally get that clean within probably five minutes, probably five to ten minutes with the sun on it. If I have to dry it inside using my little UV lamp, which is here, you can't quite see it. Um, there's my UV lamp here. And if I press, switch it on, you'll see some glorious UV-ness. There's UV, yay. Um, and that UV lamp takes a lot longer. I'd probably let it at, at least half an hour to cure that stuff, so. Uh, okay, so that's just explaining when the UV mask goes on. Now, while I've actually got this here, I'm going to grab a toothbrush because I would ideally like to test this when I finish it. But because it doesn't work, because this is a dead one, I want to get some of this stuff off. Actually, you know what I need? I need this other stuff called Flux Cleaner. Okay, I'm going to just pour some of this on. And then give it a bit of a scrub with a toothbrush. And uh, scrub, scrub, scrub. Just trying to get some of that gunk out. Um, because if I am going to test this before I ultrasonically clean it, because obviously it takes time to ultrasonically clean. So if I don't, if I want to test this as part of this live stream, um, I need to uh, I need to get some of this stuff off. So. I can be trying. Denatured alcohol for flux cleanup seems better so far, other than the smell. Yeah, I mean, this stuff reeks. I mean, it's, I don't mind the smell of this stuff, to be honest. It's sort of, it's kind of, a, I don't know, a clean smell. It's, it's, I, I don't really don't mind the smell of the alcohol either. Um, okay, just trying to get all this, this stuff off. And I'm going to do the same with the sound chip while I've got all these things away. It might also give me an opportunity to have a look and see if there might be any potential damage. Because uh, as I say, the, um, it's really common for around the sound chip for the traces to actually corrode and break. I mean, I've, so many of these ones, I end up having to take this sound chip off and lift it, take it off the board entirely, clean traces, you know, fix traces underneath it and then put it back on again. I have to do it all the time. I did one just recently, um, just the last, the last Color Classic board I did, I had to do that. So, uh, yeah, this doesn't have to look good now. This is this is all this I'm doing this for is uh, is just to hopefully make it work, um, and uh, and then I can do the ultrasonic clean later on. Uh, we will talk no more of ultrasonic cleaning because I talked for the first probably half an hour about that subject, and I people will just start to think this is an ultrasonic clean stream. It's not. Okay, 14, 14C, hey, what, I thought it was summer over there, what's that all about? It's 19 here, come on, come on. Um, okay, right, so, cap guide, I won't use my LC5751 because it's not an LC5751. We've already established that. This is the Colour Classic. Uh, once again, cheat sheet. You need a cheat sheet? I have these on my website, recapamac.com. Just checking to see whether Jay's listening. I said, <coughs> recap, oh, recapamac.com, I said. Um, and uh, the... Uh, keep looking, keep looking. I know it's in here, so I mean, it can't be far away because I do so many of them. And uh, I have a cheat sheet on there. I have a little uh, instruction guide for uh, um, how to uh, 20 degrees Celsius here. So isn't that interesting? Oh, thank you, Jay. Isn't that wonderful. I say recap a Mac and he, most of the time, puts, um, puts the link up there. And I do appreciate that very, very much. 
saves me from having to do it, and I thank you. Um, it's good to see my Patreon dollars going to work. Um, having said that, of course, I don't actually use Patreon anymore. I'm using a different system to help out Jay, House of Moth. People, uh, anyone who hasn't visited the House of Moth YouTube channel or the House of Moth website or the Apple serial number info um, website, uh, you've got to jump on and have a look. There's some great stuff there, I'm telling you. The YouTube channel, I mean, you know, what was it the, uh, what was that latest video? Um, recapping an X, it was an X serve power supply, I think, from memory. Great stuff. Um, people have got to jump on and have a look. All right, so I found myself a cheat sheet for the Color Classic, not the LC575, because we've established this isn't an LC575. Um, I have got two, three different types of capacitor on here. Um, I will put the little tiny one on first. I had to order some capacitors last night, like 150 bucks worth, so I was running low on a few. I, those who saw my uh, analog board a recap of the Color Classic recently, um, I kind of ran out, just about every cap I was pulling out of the container, I was like, oh, that's my last one. So I had to do a big order last night. So I got a whole bunch of new caps coming next week sometime. So one microfarad, no, 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 none of those. 10 microfarad, 16 volt. There we go. That's what we're going to use. Wow. Don't fall down. Stop it. Stop it. Thank you. Um, so, we've got to have a keyboard. Yeah, I, I, I thought you did. Yeah, look how good's that. That's fancy. Super fancy. Hmm. So fancy. Now, I need to sh start showing you my microscope view because that view is of no use. There's the socket I was talking about before. Incidentally, I did... Um, uh, recently, I was chatting away to someone... Oh, now, when I put this cap down, I'm going to put it slightly off center so that it doesn't touch that a bit of exposed stuff there. Um, I had someone on one of the Facebook groups talking about having an LC2. The LC2 actually has little holes on the board for a socket to sit to then put in a, a floating point unit. But because Apple were being cheap, they didn't actually put a socket there. They made all the holes. The architecture is there to have a floating point unit, but they didn't actually uh, install the socket for you to use, which is a bit mean. Uh, and I have with mine, and I know Jay's actually done this for another customer, actually put a socket on that board. And I had a customer, you know, sort of talking about that, what sort of socket should I put on there and pointed it in the right direction of which one they needed and everything. And they went in and installed it. And after they installed it, it didn't work anymore. Which is, which was obviously, well, I'm sure it'd be very disappointing for that person. Um, I guess what I wanted to say is that um, it can work. I have done it. Jay has done it um, for for a customer. We know that it can actually be done, and we know it can work. But you know, when you're doing this sort of stuff, you've got to be you've got to be pretty confident with what you're doing. You need to be very careful. And if you're wanting to practice on stuff in terms of your soldering techniques and all that, practice on something you don't care about. Don't practice on a board that you really want to keep. Um, when I started doing my early soldering, now of course I didn't follow my own advice. My very first recapping job I did to a computer that I really did want to keep, and I did a terrible job. That's many years ago now, but it was a really bad job, which I have since gone in and fixed up, but that's another story. But when I started really getting into practicing my soldering work, I got a whole stack of really old, I wonder if I've got any of the boards here, of really old um, Macintosh laptops. They were all, I think, around about 2006, 2007, something like that, possibly even earlier. A whole bunch of Intel laptops, both the white ones and the aluminium ones. And most of them were broken. Um, one or two just had a tiny fault that needed to be fixed, but most of them were broken. And I, um, I just um, played around with those. I mean, they, I got them for nothing. They weren't worth anything to me. They weren't working. Um, and I just fiddled and fiddled and fiddled and fixed a few, didn't fix others. 
uh, but I learned a lot of my soldering techniques while practicing on those boards. So that's what you need to do if you're wanting to practice this stuff. Practice on something that's not important. Okay, let's get a couple of 100 microfarad 6.3 volt capacitors. Just want to check on the uh, view account here. Uh, got, I haven't been keeping an eye on 22 people watching at the moment. Thank you to those people for persevering. Um, sounds like the chicken is back. Make my life interesting once again. <laughs> Has anyone out there been working on any vintage Mac projects at the moment? Got any new acquisitions? Got any any sort of new fancy stuff to uh, to report? Or any questions for me? always happy to answer particularly as i get to by the time we get to this stage of the recapping it's like oh my goodness this has been going on forever and yeah, we've got one little gap. um as i have mentioned several times before when i am recapping i use um Quite a high temperature on my soldering iron but as you can see when I do this soldering I tend to move the soldering iron very quickly I don't spend much time on the surface so uh, if I was new to soldering I would probably work with a much lower temperature because when you keep that high temperature on the board for too long you're likely to do some damage Got to get this in here without melting any plastic. There we go, looking good. Okay, there's two capacitors on. These are the 100 microfarad ones. We know they're 100 microfarad, well, partially because I took them out of the little container section that says 100 microfarad, but the other one is because they have 107 on them. And as I have mentioned in my streams before, that's one zero, one zero, followed by seven zeros. And that's your measurement in picofarads, which works out at 100 microfarad. Um, too many projects and recent grabs to list. Yeah, uh, well aware of, <laughs> aware of that, Steve. Been watching Steve's streams, Mac84, jump on there. Have a look at his last three streams, I think, um, where he's basically uh, come back with carloads of stuff. Uh, and he's basically just working his way through it, which is absolutely fantastic. And this is one of the reasons why we managed to badger him into getting an ultrasonic cleaner. Because he knows he's got a lot of boards to recap and clean. <laughs> Goodbye, marriage. <laughs> oh, dear, you do need understanding partners with these sorts of hobbies, don't you? Um, okay. Uh, making a cable to connect an Apple II to a Duo Disk DV9 and DV12. Uh, do you, do you, the three, the three printed these and I connect this since those are pretty rare. Okay, I did not know they were rare. I mean, and this, this is, again, my own stupidity. Well, it's not stupidity. It's it, Again, it just comes to the decisions you make at the time. Um, I had an Apple IIe, uh, the, the, I think it was the, the platinum one, that, you know, so the later model IIe had an 80-column card in it and everything like that. And um, it had a duo disk drive in it as well and the green screen monitor not the color one and we ended up actually eventually getting a hard an external hard drive for that as well it was a thing called a digi card i think from memory pretty rare i've never seen another one ever um and i think it was 10 megabytes 5 megabytes 20 megabytes i can't remember exactly but it was way more storage space than you would ever need with a 2e i mean you never even got remotely close to filling it up you could stick every bloody floppy disk and file you had on there and you were getting nowhere near to capacity um, and it was a great setup, and I, geez, I wish I'd kept it. I tell you, it was beautiful looking, and it ran beautifully, and with that hard drive and everything, oh, it's just fantastic. So, uh, but alas, I do not have it anymore. I don't even know where it went. It's probably sold to someone, maybe a family friend or something like that. My parents were teachers, which means they had a lot of obviously Apple computers. Uh, they worked with Apple computers as well as having Apple at home. And uh, 
So uh, it probably got given away to either another teacher or perhaps, or sold probably, or um, maybe a child, you know, uh, of one of those teachers or something like that. I'm just guessing, I can't remember. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's the tr if I was to go out and try and get that same setup today, I hate to think what it would cost uh, trying to find all those all those bits and pieces. Um, okay. Uh, okay, where are we? Oh, 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 we've gone. Oh, oh, geez, what's happened here? Um, just got a Daystar uh, Daystar Power Cache and PDS adapter for my two SI. Awesome. That is awesome. Um, that's that's awesome. I'm very envious, Bisbin. I would love to have a Daystar Power Cache. Well, wow, awesome. Uh, just recently got a 2000 MacBook, and I'm trying to get booty. Okay, yep. Um, yep, yep. Well, that, that's, that'll be a fun job, Sad Mac 356. I've, I've worked on a few of those in my time. I've got, I can see a couple from here. Let me know if you want part. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, done that. I'm going to have to crack open some of those compact Macs tonight. Oh, well, okay. I better get off this stream so that you can start streaming, HD. Quick as possible. Um, uh, waiting to upgrade my Mac 2CI Tacky, my Color Classic. Yes. Um, sort of the Tacky upgrade. Um, I have talked about this before. I, I totally um, commend people who do it. It's not something that I plan to do, only because it's you do have to get quite, you know, sort of barbaric with the case um, and do some pretty major stuff. But I can understand people wanting to do it because I mean, you could even take a, um, I think from memory, you can even take a Color Classic case up to a Power PC, six hundred one, but you can still take it up to a Power PC from memory, which I love the idea of having a Power PC in a little classic case. But as I say. The modifications and everything for my for me are probably just a little bit, a little bit too much. So, uh, but I def I don't I don't criticize anyone else for doing it. That's for sure. Uh, picked up two other G4s last month. Nothing new since then. But I keep looking. Yeah, actually, I got a mirror drive door the other day from one of my customers who gave it to me very kindly. Someone I, uh, who is a regular customer of mine, and I I do work for them quite regularly. Actually, gave me. A, uh, it's just a single processor one, but a mirror drive door that works beautifully. I've stuck an SSD in it already. Um, I think I've upgraded it to the maximum RAM, which I think is two gigs from memory, something like that. So yeah, I mean, um, I love that. Love it. It's just great looking computer, you know. And I, I mean, I, the Quicksilver's, of course. I mean, I I used Quicksilver's, you know, professionally when I in the olden days when they first came out. We actually had Quicksilver's in the studio that I worked in. Um, and uh, yeah, that was fantastic, really good stuff. Okay, so, um, uh, working on PowerBook 165C LCD has vertical purple lines in a two inch wide band. I replaced the capacitor except for the ones on the inverter board, and no difference. Yeah, I kind of gave up on some of those display issues. I've got a 180 or a 160 or something there over there, still in pieces. And I was having a similar problem with lines, and I ended up giving up on it. Um, I'm sure it's fixable, and I'm sure I'll find it eventually, but it's just one of those projects where I just sort of put it to one side because it was just taking up so much of my time. Um, right. Uh, show you exactly how bored I am. I charted the warming up of my ultrasonic cleaner and taking it to you. Awesome. I look forward to reading that. So were you actually, did, were you manually? You were actually typing it in at intervals, I assume? Um, so I'm enjoying watching someone else work. Uh, okay, restoring Quadra 700 with PowerPC card, battery exploded, but was minimal, it boots. Oh, lucky you, I've got a 700 here, somewhere, under the pile, somewhere, it's in here, somewhere. Uh, and mine's not so lucky. Mine does not boot. A light comes on, but that's as far as it goes. Uh, pretty badly damaged by battery. I am going to be getting back to it because I really want a 700. It was for a customer. I spent hours and hours on it. I went back to the customer. I said, look, you've got to make a decision at this stage. Uh, you know, if I keep going on this thing, we may may well get it working, but it's going to end up costing you an absolute packet. 
So what do you want to do? I mean, you you know, you want to just you know, stop. You've got a good case. You've got a you know, you got sort of some parts of it are salvageable, that sort of thing. And he uh, basically said, look, just yeah, stop, stop work. So no worries. I said I'll uh, I'll you know send it all back to you, and then you know we're just talking about various other little projects. And I said, look, at the end of the day. Uh, if you want to sell it to me, um, and I can't offer you much because I've already invested so much time in it, but if you want to sell it to me as it is, I'll buy it. And he, he said, yeah, well, I'm happy with that. So I bought it from him. So that 700 is now mine. So I can ultimately spend unlimited hours on it if I want, not have to worry about a huge sending someone a huge bill. But um, that's the upside. The downside is that I'm going to have to spend huge amount of hours on it and there's no one I can bill. Um so, um, wish people could give me an iMac G3. I've got one that doesn't work. Um, sound up very well. LC520 board. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's cool. Uh, LC520, by the way, is virtually, I don't even know if there is a difference other than potentially something in the ROMs between an LC520 and a Color Classic, sorry, a class, Color Classic 2 board. Same spec, same board, same board number. The code on it is exactly the same. Um, MBB are wonderful cows, I agree. Aren't those called the wind tunnel? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Uh, that got there. Jeez, they got a loud speaker on them, I tell you. I was using it the other day, I was playing with it, and I was having to restart it a few times. My wife was like, Can you turn that volume down? Because every time it started, it's like, Boom! <clears throat> Okay. Sorry, guys. I'm getting really distracted here. Is this ever going to get recapped? Thankfully, there aren't many caps on this one. So. Uh, okay. Um, Retro Redrum, thank you for joining. This is the same joke that I tell all the time, but we've just been killing time till you got here. Can anyone see where I put that cap? Here it is. Okay. So, uh, stay here with my stopwatch and note it all down. That is awesome. You, you, I'm going to have to come. I'm going to have to step up and I'm going to have to do that with mine, aren't I? Uh, uh, first good Mac, yeah, I think it's great, yeah, uh, 5500 board, it will turn into a 500 max G3 with the same card I use on my TAM, oh. uh, still, okay, alright, okay, I think I've caught up with all the chat, so this is what happens when I ask people to uh, contribute to the chat, I then have to sit here and read it all, which I love doing, but it does slow me down with my uh, recapping somewhat. Some what? Cool whip. Can't enjoy pie with that cool whip. <clears throat> okay. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do -do. Okay. Uh, just uh, mentioning again to folks who are watching, if you're interested in any of the equipment that I use, please always feel free to jump on and ask any questions that you have. Uh, and also, if you are interested in buying similar equipment, I have links, uh, Amazon links for buying all this stuff that I use. Um, some of it there have been availability issues with, and I think that's probably all COVID-based stuff. Um, but and I do also provide links for some things that are lower cost versions of what I use, keeping in mind, of course, that I use this stuff a lot, which justifies the expense. But if you're looking at doing this just occasionally, you may not necessarily want to spend as much money. So there are some low cost alternatives that allow you to get, you know, stuff that's almost as good. Um, and that reminds me I owe Dana a link to a little digital microscope that I used a while ago because uh, it was quite good it was what I used before I got this big fancy one uh, this one that I use which is an M scope okay nearly done folks Need a little bit more solder there, don't I? Sutter. Need a little more sutter. Ba -ba 
So I've got a, quite a bit of work here to do at the moment. I'm not going to stream all of it. And the reason for that is that some of it is the sort of work where I need to use my brain. And my brain kind of gets a bit stuck sometimes when I'm live streaming because I'm chatting away the whole time. Uh, when I'm trying to diagnose faults and I have to sit there and take measurements and go in and check things out, you know, I end up, uh, I end up sort of, uh, you know, not talking and then it just starts to become a bit of a dull stream. So I've got a 17 inch MacBook Pro here from 2010 that I need to try and find out why the keyboard doesn't work. I need to ascertain whether this is actually a fault with the keyboard or a fault with some sort of controller on the board. I have uh, a Macintosh SE30, which is giving me SEMA CMAC, despite the fact that I've gone in and recapped it and cleaned it and done all sorts of stuff to it. I've got uh, an LC575 that doesn't start, absolutely dead as, doesn't boot, no chime, no green light, nothing. Uh, has also been recapped and cleaned, and we're not having any success with that. And not only that, it's as clean as a whistle, uh, which means that it suggests that it's probably not like a damaged trace or something like that. Now, it could have been damaged, you know. Um, I know the customer was installing an, a SCSI 2SD into it. They might have bumped something, um, but, you know, knocked a component off or something like that. I have checked, but I haven't seen anything, but, you know, it could still be there. Um, okay, so... Uh, cool whip. Say whip. Whip. Say cool whip. Cool whip. Um, right. Surface ceramic cap today. Live on Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. He said he was at 450C and he couldn't remove it. No idea what he was doing. 450C. Hmm. Yeah, I have mine on 420. Doesn't take long for a ceramic to come off the board, I can tell you. Um, uh, okay, by the way, thanks for the vid on SCSI to SD. Helps a lot. I just bought two of them. Excellent. One for the Mac SC, the other one will be for the Color Classic. Can I ask, Yannick, what which one did you get? Obviously, we've got the version 5.0, the version 5.1, the version 5.5, the version 6. I'm just curious which version of the SCSI to SD you bought. Uh, I'm probably about to tell you something, uh, Yannick, that's going to make you cry, but um, yeah, I'm just curious. Okay, the 5.1. That's interesting. I didn't even know you could buy those on eBay. I've seen the 5.0 on eBay. So the 5.1 is the taller and wider one. Um, yeah, it's so uh, the reason um, the reason is that, yes, the 5.1, so the main reseller of the version 5.1 is inertial computing. Now, these the SCSI 2 SDs are actually the brainchild of a guy called Michael McMaster who lives here in Australia, sunny Queensland. It's the state directly above New South Wales where I am. It's very, very warm and tropical up there. Now, uh, he, it is my understanding that he has done a deal with inertial computing and they are the sole reseller now of the version 5.1. However, I did notice that they don't have any in stock there. And that is, that's a real shame. And I don't know, again, this could be a COVID thing. There could be some manufacturing issues. Or maybe they do them in batches and they're waiting up. I don't know, whatever the case is. But um, so, uh, so anyhow, the, the, um, I don't know what you paid on eBay, but I hope it's comparable to the price that they're actually saying on inertial computing. I hope you didn't have to pay too much more. Because interestingly enough, on eBay, they also sell the version 5.0 regularly, but they're always overpriced. I don't know why they're priced so high, but if you try and buy a version 5.0 on eBay, the prices are really, really high. If you are wanting to buy a version 5.0, which is the shorter one, um, that one is available from a Chinese company and you order them and they actually, I think they actually manufacture them there and then send them out. Um, it's iteead.cc. Um, I might even just put a link in here. So, um, it's, it's still expensive, but it is cheaper than buying it from, um, eBay if you're looking for a version two. So I'm just going to grab 
this link and I'm going to pop it into the chart. There we go. And I have bought lots from this. So if you're concerned about buying it from a, a Chinese seller or something like that, you're worried it's going to be dodgy or something like that. I have bought probably about a dozen of these things from this, from this company. Um, so just um, around 130 Canadian dollars. Okay, no worries. Um, so, um, so anyhow, this is the, uh, that link that I've sent you, which is to um, ITED, I, I, ITED, I don't know, I'm not sure if you pronounce it E-A-D like bread or, or is, I, don't, I really don't know. Um, so hello, David, thank you for joining. Um, so anyhow, just, just for people out there who are looking for a SCSI USD, if they want to go with the version 5, that link there is probably the cheapest you are going to get it. Um, so, uh, oh, it was just, I, I was concerned that you, if, when you're saying, so what's going to make me cry? I was concerned that you may have ended up overpaying. That was all. I, um, it sounds to me like you did fairly well, so that's great. Um, but, um, but the, uh, yeah, I, I just had some concerns that, um, that cause as I say, certainly with the version fives, most of the version fives that are available on eBay are going for way too much money. So that was my concern. So, but you've got the five, version 5.1. It sounds to me like you paid a reasonable price. No issue there. No issue for concern. I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to ruin your day or anything like that. Um, okay. So I am just going to jump across now to a different camera like this. Oh, one day I'm going to find a way of mounting that camera in a higher position and it will be far more useful. Uh, Plus one, right? I haven't bought a Stasi from them, but I've bought some custom PCBs from them. They're good quality. Yep, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, as I say, I mean, they they no issue with them at all. They're not like a shonky dealer or something like that. They are they are the business. They they're doing good stuff there. So, um, and the Scuzzy 2 SDs come in a nice little cardboard box and everything like that. Because uh, I have resold a few of them. Um, you know, I mentioned in the video in my Scuzzy 2 SD video that I um, often set them up. Because I've had so many people jump on Facebook and things like that, and they go, I'm trying to set up a SCSI to SD, and I can't get it to work. Um, I can't get it to format. I can't this, can't that. You know. So what I generally do is I say to someone, what do you want to put this in? And they say, oh, I want to put in a Color Classic, or I want to put in an SE30, or whatever the case may be. And I say, what system do you want? And they go, oh, I want system 7.1. And I will then go in, I will set up the SCSI to SD with an SD card in it, I will pre-format it, I will install an operating system, get it all ready to go, so that all they have to do is take that SCSI to SD, put it in the computer, switch it on. So that's what I do. Now, obviously for some people out there, that takes away all the fun. And so I realize that there are some people that really don't want that done for them. They wanna buy it fresh and they wanna go through and do the whole thing themselves. But my point is that, uh, uh, that for some people that just want plug and play, I set that stuff up. So. Um, drivers on it, discussing to us there. Yeah, okay. All right. Now, I finished. This is my LC575 that looks suspiciously like a color classic, because it is, because I made a mistake. Before I made the little thumbnail and I made the description for the video, I'm going to have to go out and change it after this video is done, because this is just another color classic. <laughs> Bill G, hello. Um, now, uh, as usual, whenever I do a recap, I always go and do a double check. I check to make sure that I've got the right caps in the right place. I check to make sure that I have the polarity correct. And I check to make sure that they have been soldered on both sides securely. So, for, I need my goggles on again. Here we are. I just took them off. Okay, so we've got a 47, 47, 47, 47. 47, 47, 100, 100, 10. So, uh, positive, 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 positive. Good, good, good. And then last of all, have they been sold on both sides? Yes, 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 yes. Nice and secure, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Right, now, once again, this was a board that did not work, did not start, was dead, unhappy, not good. I have cleaned it a little bit. I haven't gone crazy. At the end of the day, it's going to find its way into the ultrasonic cleaner. It will get cleaned properly. But I have cleaned it some. 
Um, and uh, I'm hoping that that cleaning might be enough to see this work now that it has new caps on it. Because my concern is that the problem with this computer isn't just the fact that it had leaky caps, it's the fact that it had electrolyte all over the board. So, um, can I tell you, there's one thing that I hate about the CCs more than anything else. The Color Classic, there is one thing that drives me bananas with these things. And if you have these out a lot, like I do, um, you'll know why. It's... These, these little ground pins that clip in. Um, on the later boards like the 520, 550, 575, they're all soldered on. On these ones, they're not soldered on. They just clip in there and they fall out all the time. <coughs> Drives me bananas. Okay, so as usual, when we're doing this sort of thing, I like to test them. Now, I didn't bring down a Color Classic case because I thought I was gonna be working on a 575 because I'm an idiot. So I'm gonna to have to duck up to the house very quickly and I'm gonna grab myself a, um, what do you call them things? A, um, uh, let's get this out of the way. I'm gonna grab myself a color classic case and we're gonna set it up here and we'll test to see whether this works. <sighs> Hopefully it will have dried by the time I get back. Okay, so if everyone wouldn't mind just being a little bit patient for a moment and I will just quickly go and do this and I shall be back soon. Hello, I'm back. This is the Color Classic. Uh, this lovely red stuff on the side here. I'm not responsible for that. It got given to me like that. Um, right. Board. B-O-A-R-D, not B-O-R-E-D. Just going to hit this with a little bit of hot air just to... Uh, Make sure it's all nice and dry. Now this one doesn't have any RAM or VRAM installed, but, oh God, this thing, man. That's like about the fourth time that's happened in a, in a live stream. It can't be good. It can't be good for it, honestly. Okay. So, um, uh, 
Yes, this has no RAM and it has no VRAM installed, but there is onboard stuff. You've got some onboard VRAM here and you've got some onboard RAM here. It's enough for us to start it. Doesn't have a battery. This is not one of the computers that has to have a battery in it to start. So let's just put this in, <coughs> excuse me, and see how it goes. Plugged in, nice and gentle. I'll be nice and careful because once you bend those pins up on the uh, on the uh, board, those little pins on the connector at the bottom, trying to get them flat again, nightmare. Um, I have got a power cable here and this is wired up to 240 of the finest Australian volts. Um, okay. Let's just get a keyboard cable. This is another thing we need to start these up. We need a keyboard because it's a soft boot type situation. Where is the other end of this cable? For goodness sake. Oh, wow. Thank you. There we go. Now, I just want to make one thing very, very clear here. There is a fairly high likelihood this is not going to work because it hasn't been ultrasonically cleaned yet. I'm fairly sure that the problem with this is related to how much electrolytes all over the board. I did give it a clean with a toothbrush, but it's probably not going to be enough. It is probably going to need that full ultrasonic clean in order to get it happy again. There is also the possibility that, that sound chip has been damaged by that electrolyte or a trace has been damaged. So another reason why it may not boot. But I'm just sort of getting everyone ready for uh, the potential outcome. It could, of course, just work. Now I click this, we'll get the that digor sound. Internet decided to stop working correctly. I'm back. Oh, well, welcome back. You came back at the right time, Matt, because I'm about to uh, test this and see how it goes. Okay, so, uh, drum roll, anyone? Um, I am about to press the power button thusly. Dead as a donger. Absolutely and totally nothing. So, um, the next step, of course, is to ultrasonically clean it, and we check and see whether that's the problem. The... Uh, uh, Dana, hello. Thank you for joining for this rather disappointing test of this board I just recapped, which is not, it is not an LC575, like the description says. It is actually a color classic. So, oh, the chicken's back. Um, hello. No, you're not going behind the monitor again. Come on. Come on. Yep. On your bike. Go on. Um... <clears throat> They are so stubborn. I'm telling you, chickens are just so stubborn. Come on. Okay. Why do you keep breaking up my stream? Huh? You're buttering me. You? Okay. Bye. Um, okay. Yes, that is my chicken. Um, all right, so yes, it didn't work. That's very disappointing, um, but not at all surprising. Given the symptoms this came in with, I had a pretty good feeling it wasn't just going to be a recap situation. Um, so uh, I'm pressing the button on the power button and nothing is happen happening. One of the things you can often do to force these things to start up if you don't have a keyboard is you can unplug them. When you unplug them, you hear the fans come on and then you just plug it back in again. And that sometimes makes them start up, but no, not in this instance. So, uh, as I say, the uh, the first thing I'm going to do is ultrasonically clean it. The second thing, thing I will be doing is, um, uh, if it still doesn't work after ultrasonically cleaning, I'll probably take the sound chip off. That's the one in the main firing line. Uh, and I will look for any broken traces there. I mean, maybe I should just take the sound chip off and check now anyway. Oh. Well, at the very least, I'm going to look at it under the microscope to see if we see anything there. So, as I say, the, the two main culprits here now are this guy here, the sound chip, and this guy here, which is the CUDA chip. So, um, I do have spares of this one. I don't have spares of this one. So, if this chip is, is cooked, there's very little I can do with this one. Um, I can... Um, uh, I can 
uh, sort of take this off and then repair damaged traces, but if the chip itself is damaged, there's nothing I can do. So let's just go and have a quick look with the microscope. Um, ba -ba -ba. This has taken me a lot longer than I thought it was going to take, so uh, I, uh, I probably won't get much more done today, I'm afraid. I do have some other commitments today, um, as much as I would like to just keep going with this. Uh, I may stream again later on. It's probably going to be too late for the, uh, the US folks because it's probably going to be starting to get into, uh, you know, ridiculously late or early, depending on how you look at it. Um, so where I'm looking are... Uh, are these little joins here at the point where let's get some tweezers so I can point I'm looking for you know sort of this little join section here so you've got the pad there and you've got the trace here and where they meet there there's a little dip and that little dip often ends up getting corrosion in it and breaking now these ones really don't look too bad to be honest I can of course get my uh, multimeter and, and test quite easily we have the uh, we have the tools oh by the way anyone who's been who watched my, one of my streams recently and saw my little component tester I have uh, I have modified it now and I have put a uh, little uh, 9 volt battery in it I also made some little test leads but uh, I put a 9 volt battery in the back now I used to have it connected up to my power supply but now it's portable with a little 9 volt battery and I've got a little window in there for putting the battery in there. It was an absolute nightmare because the battery doesn't, well, the battery fits in there, but the moment I put any sort of holder in there, it wouldn't fit anymore. So the battery is kind of just stuck in there with a bit of double-sided tape, which I don't like. I'll probably have to revert to some Velcro or something like that. Uh, probably too late for the US folks. US folks all show up at 4 a.m. <laughs> um, so this is a little component tester. I uh, featured this on a show, on my show, one of my shows recently. Um, and it impressed some people enough to go out and buy one themselves. You buy these in kit form. You can actually buy these assembled, but I bought this one in kit form because I like putting kits together. Um, and essentially, you just uh, you get a component. Now, come on, capacitor, capacitor. My kingdom for a capacitor. Um, there's they're, they're everywhere. I mean, they're, they're absolutely everywhere. Why can't I find one? Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. This one I can tell from the color is off an Amiga. It's obviously fallen off my desk at some stage. So um, I put the uh, little component in this little holdery thingy, just like this, which you can't see there because um, it's not in camera. Oopsie. It helps if you actually open it up first and then put the component in. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, then you switch it on. And he has a look and he says, testing. See, no, it's a capacitor. And then it's telling me that, that is reading 464 microfarads with an ASR of 0.23 ohms, V loss of 1.4%. Um, and this is a 470 microfarad capacitor. So for it to tell me it's 464, is this one is still definitely functioning within spec. So anyhow, they're great little things. They test transistors as well. They test diodes. They're, you know, nifty little tool. Uh, and it's like they come in kit form. So, okay. Uh, yeah, they are nice. They are fancy. And I, I do recommend them for anyone that's doing this sort of work. They just come in handy. So, okay. So um, I am, I, yeah, I got distracted, didn't I? I was about to go in and do some quick testing here of continuity. Okay, so, get a message from my mother. I just need to make sure it's not so, oh, no. Couldn't be that easy, could it? Or it could. The very first one I checked. <laughs> and the second one I checked. That's, are you serious? Are you serious? It could, it, is it? Maybe that stuff in the middle isn't terribly conducted. Yeah. Uh, you're, we're not even looking at what I'm looking at in the microscope. That makes for great viewing, doesn't it? Um, okay, I'm going to do it again. But what I'm going to do, I was testing it through this little, this little section of the hole here, which has all this solder in it. I'm going to just scrape a little bit free here. 
scrape. We'll scrape a little bit here as well. Just expose some copper, capia. So I can test it between copper and the uh, the uh, thing with the thing here on the thing. No. No. Well, there's two traces we know definitely don't work. So uh, do I have a link to that component tester? I will add one. Um, it's something that you can generally buy them in uh, places like, uh, I think, um, I think like AliExpress, Banggood, um, places like that that sell, you know, sort of kits and that. But I don't think this one was from Amazon. I will have to have a look. But I will add a link to the description later on, I promise. Um, all those UV sticks on your big ring, did you make that yourself? Are you talking about this? Um, USB sticks on your big ring. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about this thing. So this is, yeah, I can wear it as a bracelet. It's nice. It's a fashion statement. Uh, yes, I did make, make this myself. So I have two of them. Uh, I have these ones. Well, I should go into this here, shouldn't I? I have these ones. And I have these ones. Now, these ones here are the Apple Service Diagnostics ASD um, for working on more modern Macs, like Mac Pros and MacBooks and MacBook Pros and stuff like that. You boot up off these and you can run a whole series of hardware tests. They're not meant to be available to the public, but they're not that hard to find. Um, so I have all the most common, I don't have all of them on here, but I've got a lot of them. And these are the, certainly the most commonly used ones I have. So they're all the Apple service diagnostics there that I use for testing my computers. Um, and then I've got a whole bunch of OSs here. So this is, uh, these are all installers um, going right back to, I think, Snow Leopard, uh, right up to, uh, what's the newest one I have? Mojave. Mojave is the newest one I have. So, uh, um, yeah, so, and then, yeah, some of them are bootable. Some of them are just installers, but it's just, it just makes life a lot easier when you're working with it. In particular, if you're working with computers of varying ages, you can just say, oh, okay, this is the installer I want to run. Shouldn't have touched my eye then. Um, all right, so, well, we know that we've got busted traces on this. I'm just going to check this one here as well because uh, that one doesn't look as bad. Yeah. Okay, so if I've got two busted traces on the outside, I did it again. Yeah. If I've got two busted traces on the outside, um, there's probably busted traces on the inside as well. So we've got to clean it all up. Um, yeah, oh yeah, definitely easier than CDs and DVDs, that's for sure. And if you're going to be doing a lot of that stuff, it's the way you've got to do it. All right, so it looks like we're getting a little bit of bonus material added to this one, and that is going to be the removal of this sound chip. So um, I can't really film this as well, so I might do this on the side angle and try and zoom in. Whoopsie, I, I've done something here because I keep whacking the screen. Let me move that a bit. I keep whacking it. There we go. So let's get a bit of light down here. Let's get a little bit of zoom up here. Where can I zoom to? About there? I'll have to do. Yes, yeah, so I made these little test probes for my um, for that little component tester as well. So look at this. Look at this. No, you can't see it, but can I put it there? No, I can put it there. Look at the, look at the, look at the table. It rolls off. Oh, made a liar out of me. Okay. So, um, whoop, you did it again. Okay, so we've got to get this guy. Oh, I've zoomed in too far. Right there, that's, that's close. We've got to get this guy off. I'm going to apply some hot air. Hopefully, I didn't destroy this when I knocked it on the floor before. It appears to be blowing out hot air, so I'm feeling fairly confident. So, I've got to get the board warmed up, got to get the component warmed up, got to heat up from the outside. I would be better off using a nozzle that heated out of, you know, four edges. You can buy them. I don't have one for this, but, you know, this works. So I'm just heating around the outside of this chip. And then once I've got a bit of heat to it, I'll then just start doing a bit of a nudge with tweezers every now and again. Wait for it to move. The most, the worst thing you can do when removing a component like this 
is try and remove it prematurely. That's how you tear pads. You end up in a situation where you've maybe melted 80% uh, of the pads and you go, yeah, away we go, and you tear a pad. Um, so you've got to make sure you get that. Oh, look at the sponge under there. You've got to make sure you get that thing completely and totally ready to take off before you take it off. This is impressive. Look at that. Look at goat it. Oh, you can't see it again. Mm. Now that, because it's dry, that's what we refer to as gunge. So, let's get some flux onto this and we'll get it cleaned up. Uh, this might sound like it's some huge, difficult, long undertaking that I'm talking about here, but it's not. It is actually quite a quick process. Um, I get some flux on here. I get some solder on here. I uh, clean up these pads. I expose a little bit of the edges of those pads and I check and see whether I can restore continuity to them just by getting a little bit of extra solder on there or whether I need to actually go in and create a little, um, a little trace repair. I have a video on my channel about doing trace repairs. If you're uh, ever thinking, you know, sort of, oh, I'm going to need to do a trace repair. It sounds quite difficult, and I will tell you it is a lot easier to do with a microscope like this, but it is not actually as bad as you might think. Um, you know, it's at the end of the day, we're just restoring continuity. That's all we're doing. We're just, uh, um, you know, getting a little bit of wire, a little bit of copper or whatever, and just joining these things together. So um, you just need to do it in a way that's going to last. Gungalicious. Gungalicious. Yes, I know. So it's I've turned you notice now I've added liquid to it. It's sponge now. Oh, did we work out what the gaseous form was? I'm sure we did. I know it was punge, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, I think Dana came up with that one from memory. Um, Dana from Dana Does Stuff. I'd like to give his channel a uh, a plug because something tells me that in the not too distant future we will see videos of him doing stuff. But at the moment, he only says he does stuff. We have no evidence that he does. But we will be keeping an eye. Right, it looks like I've got another broken trace there. I can see. I'll point it out once I finish this. Okay. Time for some cleaning. I'm going to have to get the old scalpel out because we have got some... We've got some stuff to fix here. Whoopsie. So the first thing I want to do is I want to expose the gap here. I've got zoomed a bit too much, haven't I? Okay. I saw two gaps. Awesome. Okay. I'm glad I've got people on the, you know, getting with the program on the case. So it's going to expose some copper with these. Because sometimes I can bridge that little gap. So this is, see that little divot there? You can kind of see there's this little tiny little indentation just there. That's where the trace rot happens. It eats through that. That divot is actually on the board, but that's where it, where it happens. Um, and so it's that we have to kind of bridge. Um, this one doesn't look too bad, but I'm still going to expose it. Uh, and there, and there. And near, and near, and near. I mean, no wonder this thing doesn't start. I mean, look at that one. Shocker. That's probably going to need a um, a trace repair. These ones here don't look too bad. All right, all right. This one looks awful, but it's thick enough that I don't think there's going to be any break in that. Uh, uh, uh. That one looks pretty bad. I am scraping with a, I'm trying to scrape here, scraping with a surgical scalpel. It's what I prefer to use. It is my scalpel, is my uh, cutting implement of choice. I like them because they have these particular ones I use. They have curved blades. But someone has recently told me that you can buy curved blades for exacto knives. I did not know that, mainly because I don't think we have exacto knives out here, but we have craft knives, which are kind of the same thing, but... I've never seen a curved one on one of those, but apparently they exist. So it's the curved blade that I like to use because it works really well for scraping. Um, right, so the next thing we need to do apart from focus is 
grab our wick, make sure it's got a fair bit of solder on it, and we go and just gently rub around this rub around this copper that I've exposed. And what we're hoping that we might be able to do is get some solder, solder into those little gaps and maybe restore that connection without needing to actually do a trace repair. But we won't know if that works until I get the old beepity beeper out and test. I look at this one. This one is an absolute shocker. I mean, that's huge. Ugh. Okay, so. Right, so let's go in and get the old uh, um, multimeter here. And I do believe that one of those I'm going to have to do a trace repair. So, um, at, at last, something interesting in the stream. Well, for me anyway. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, so testing. No, no, that one's okay. No, no. Yes, yes, I can see that that one's joined, that's okay, yes, this one goes to here, moving out of camera, sorry, okay, this one here, no, yes, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, yes, okay, well that seems to still work even though that looks really ugly okay right i will make sure i get lots of solder onto those when i actually put a component back on there uh machine that goes bing there's a monty python fan out there um okay so right so how are we going to uh, how are we going to sort some of these out let me just uh get this one as well this one don't look too crash hot The ones on the inside are obviously a pain because I've got to run a wire from the inside to the outside. So we've got you know, one, two, three of those that we're going to have to do. The outside ones I can actually repair afterwards after the component goes back on. But the inside ones, they have to be repaired before the component goes back on. Um, I don't remember whether this one was knackered. No, he's good. Okay. All right, let's get some... Flux Rooney on there, clean that up. Not flux alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, 99.9%. Don't ask me what the point one is. Point one percent fairy dust. Okay. Hmm. 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 Now. Worth mentioning, when I do this as a service, when I provide this as a service, what I'm doing now, I do actually charge extra for. I don't include this as a standard recapping. This is referred to as minor trace repair, and I do charge a little bit more for that. And I'm sure you can see why I do charge more for that, because there is quite a bit of work involved. There's, you know, sort of, uh, there is, I'd like to say that there is some skill involved. Um, you may not agree with me, but okay now what i usually like to do when i'm doing trace repairs i like to make the wire go right the way back to a via um uh, via being these little holes here that i'm shoving a needle into the reason i'm shoving a needle into them is because most of those vias have uh solder mask uh on them and i just like to break a little hole so that i can feed a wire through uh i keep forgetting i keep forgetting uh, um, yes, that's good. Yes, that's good. Oh, wow, that's good. Oh, I don't need to do that one. That's joyous. Don't need to do that one. I definitely need to do that one. So I've only got one on the inside that I need to do. That's that's nice. Bruce is happy. I like the way I just referred to myself in the third person. Can't you just put a resin across? Probably could, but I ain't gonna do that. Okay. 
So I put a little wire. So it puts me in a little wire. Okay. Just want to be sure, want to be sure, want to be sure. All right. Now, uh, this one, this one, this one. Do I run the wire all the way back to this via for it to potentially be stronger? Or do I just run the wire for this little end bit here? Um, you know what? I'm going to run the wire all the way through. So I've got to make sure that I can get through to the other side of this hole here. So I'm going to put a little needle in it just to mark the position for me because when I take this away, I'm going to be looking using my naked eyes, my nude eyes, rather than my eyes with underpants on. Um, I think that comes out there. going to be there, there, yeah, okay, okay, I think it might be that one, I think it's just above the screen printing of R32, uh, gap on the trace to that V2, yeah, okay, we'll see, um, so, Let's just have a look. Uh, R32. I think the hole is that there. Um, I can test that out though uh, by going here and sucking the solder out. It's gonna the focus is gonna change on this because the board's not stable. Sorry about all the wobbly. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's just a probe point. That's not even going through. What a twerp. So it's not that then. Uh -huh. um, could be one of these holes. I'm going to poke holes in the uh, UV solder mask of all of them. Hope I can get a wire through. Don't think it's the thick one. It's probably going to be one of these thin ones. Sometimes getting a wire through these things is an absolute nightmare. Is why I end up sometimes, you know, going shortcut. I'm just going to find a thinner needle. It's not a big enough hole, is it? I'm going to give it a tap with a hammer. Tap, tap. There's something blunt. Some blunt instrument here. Give it a tap. Tap, 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 tap. There we go. That's better. It really made no difference at all with all that tapping. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have anything other than a needle to poke through that. It's, it's they are just the holes are so tiny, um, and as you can see, it's it, they're too tiny even for a needle to fit through. Um, okay, so if I flip it over, that's the top left. It's, there's nothing else around top left, so that'll when I flip it over, they'll be on the bottom left. So let's go and have a look here again, again. It's this one. There we go. It's that one there, the one right in the middle of R35. So it's, yeah. All right. So I would really like to be able to feed a wire through there. Two millimeter bit for them. I can tell you one thing that is a lot smaller than two millimeters. If you want to see what uh, two millimeters looks like under the microscope here, I'll show you. <clears throat> I don't know that I have a two millimeter bit here. Well, we can start with this one. <coughs> See what size this is. This is no size on it. 
But what you're looking at here at the moment is probably a one millimeter bit. Um, most probably. Uh, I think I have like a half millimeter bit. That's too big. But uh, here we go. I, I, this is not a drill bit, it's an Allen key. But this is two millimeters. And so we're looking at the holes. That's two millimeters. So as you can see, we would need a much smaller uh, drill bit to get through that little hole there. So, a wire, what gauge of wire do you use for the via repair? I used uh, three different sizes depending on the, the repair. This one I'm going to use this one, and this one is 34 AWG or American wire gauge um, for this one. Hopefully I can get this through the hole. We will see. I don't know if it'll go through, but we can try. Mm-hmm. Are you going through? Or are you just tricking me into thinking you're going through? You are going through. Oh, lucky day. <laughs> Look at that. Going through. Right, so now what we need to do is we need to clean off this trace a little bit so that we can stick the wire to it. Um And radios the holes much bigger. Yes, I can tell you, I would actually like to work with slightly larger holes. Not, not hugely larger, but it would just make life a lot easier if they were a little bit bigger than this. A little bit. Boop, 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 boop. Um, it's worth mentioning, this trace, this is not the first one of this particular trace I've had to repair on a Color Classic. There's obviously something in the manufacturer with that big gap there. Um, and so, yeah, it happens. Right. So, time to do my fancy, fancy pants uh, trace repair here. I am going a little bit overboard with this, but, you know, it's just who I am, man. Okay, there we go. Got, got some solder on that there. Uh, yeah, I know. I yeah, I realise that what I'm working on here is way bigger than the stuff that you typically work on, Jay. I mean, of course, I did work on that stuff myself once upon a time, um, but you work on it far more regularly than I do. Uh, I'm just going to get some solder onto that first. There we go. Okay. Then I am going to get another pair of tweezers and I'm going to bend this up. As you can see, I'm following the contour of this uh, trace as I put this down as closely as I can. I mean, you know, it's not exactly the same, but it's close. Um, and I, the reason I do that is because I just think it looks nice. Okay, there we go. So, now what we do is get a whole big splooge of flux on there. And that's why I'm holding that down, just neaten it up. Neaten. Just gets rid of any excess uh, solder there. So we've only got enough solder to hold it on. Uh, now I'm going to get some quick. One well, sexy trace repair. Well, thank you very much. It's not my best, but it'll do. It's going to be underneath the chip. So at the end of the day, does it really matter how good it looks? So that's the only one I think from the inside we need to repair. I think everything else is actually making continuity along all these other ones. Even though those, those ones did look a little bit iffy up here, they are making contact. Uh, same with this one, these ones here. Um, if I just, we'll just test it again because we like to be sure. Because once this goes on, I don't want to have to take it off again. There to there. Beep, beep, beep. Looking good. Okay, so. Now, you can see I've got a great big trailing bit of wire hanging off the end here. I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to keep that there. And I'm going to put some flux on here. And a beer in there. And a chair as well. Okay. I'm going to get some of this excess um, solder off this chip. And I might give it a bit of a clean too. But this is the sound chip. Um, these 
I have tried to get replacements of these. I went to a, a Chinese company that said they had some. They said they had like 10,000 of them or something in stock. So I put in an order for them and then they came back and they said, sorry, we sold out. Um, now, if that doesn't sound a little bit sus to you, I mean, 10,000 of them? The demand for these things is so high. So anyway, I ultimately called them out on it, but they really weren't interested in having a conversation with me about that. Um, so I just got frustrated that they're actually advertising these things as a product that they sell and they clearly don't have any. Um, the only way I can get new ones of these is to salvage them off dead boards. So I do every now and again get people kindly donating me boards that have been wrecked beyond repair. Um, I had a funny situation once with a customer who had a, a Color Classic that I was having trouble getting working. I still have the board here, as a matter of fact. And uh, I said to them, look, you know, I think I know what the problem is, but I don't have a spare component for it because I can't get replacements. And he, um, and he said, no worries, look, I've got a spare board, um, a spare busted board. It's one that I had a go of recapping myself, tore some pads, uh, it doesn't work. I'm going to send that to you and uh, you can rate it for parts. I said, well, that sounds great. That's awesome. You make my life a lot easier doing that. He sent the board to me. I had a look, and yeah, sure enough, there were a couple of busted traces on it, uh, a couple of busted pads on it, but the rest of the board was in really good condition, way better condition than the other one he sent me. So I actually said to him, look, I think it's actually going to be easier for me to fix the pads on this one than trying to find the problem in this one. So he said, okay, that's fine. So sure enough, I just repaired the, repaired the pads on that one, put new caps on it, boom, away she went. So, um, yeah, all right, so this is now a little bit cleaner. Looking a little bit nicer. Look at those lovely pins there. Once again, this is also a PLCC chip. I mentioned it before when I was talking about the FPUs. But is anyone still watching? I've been going on for such a long time. 25 people. Hooray to everyone. Well done. Well done. All right, so now a little bit more flux up here. Need to have plenty of flux on here. When you're doing this like replacing these surface mount components. Flux is your friend. Um, as usual, I mention this all the time. This is a PLCC chip, which means that it has a dot right there. Can we see the dot? That's the dot. That indicates pin one. And then the pins go around in a clockwise direction, I think. I'm sure it's clockwise. I think it's clockwise. One, two, so one, two, three, four, five etc etc they go around they also have a little beveled edge on them there in one spot bevel 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 there's a bevel there's a dot there's a bevel and on this board we have a dot screen printed and a bevel screen printed so that's how we know the orientation so we're going to plonk that down we want to get it as close as possible as you can see here's my little repair trace there i want to hang that out to one side okay so now oh look at that jay thank you very much i can't do an eep because that's been taken um and i don't do a very good quack i can do a clink clink something like that or i can just say thank you very much it means a lot to me to get a super chat i do appreciate it um makes me feel like it's all worthwhile now, I'm not trying to guilt everyone else into giving me a super chat, okay? Because at the end of the day, you don't have to pay to watch my stuff. Uh, but just remember, they are appreciated. Far out, man. Um, I need a little bit more solar on my tip here. So, let's try again. We want to... So when I'm putting these on, I generally tack it down on one side. I'm, I'm having a lot of grief for this because of that little trace hanging out there. It's making the chip move where I don't want it to. So let me see if I can get some... I need to just... There we go. I've got some tack on there. But I'm, I'm always with these just looking to tack down a couple of pins first. Uh, okay. Killing trolls on a PC. What sort of trolls are you killing? The sort that come on and say rude things to you in, in live chats and stuff like that? Those sorts of trolls? Or more of a, uh, a troll like from a, uh, uh, a 
like a Lord of the Rings type troll. Okay. So there we've got, I just need to make sure before I start going crazy with putting solder on that I do have these pins lining up fairly well. They are not exact, but they are close enough. Close enough for rock and roll. And I'm just going to do a nice big fat drag solder here. You can see I've bridged a few, but that will sort itself out after doing this a few times. Nice big drag solder. And then we've got these nice little kind of, uh, what do you call them, like buttresses that sort of join from the pad up to the pin. Let's do this side now, the underside. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Now, once again, uh, there is no guarantee that after doing all this work, this is going to work, but I am hopeful that it will help. Quietly hopeful. Noisily hopeful. All right. I'm just want, I'm trying to get the best angle here. I don't want to melt anything. Let's get some little solder. We'll do a bit of a drag. This one I need to be careful of because that's where my trace repair is. I don't want to accidentally put that metal, that uh, wire onto one of the pins that I, where I don't want it. So I'm going to drag solder the ones around it. But for that one, I'm going to do it individually. And what I may even do just for fun, is I might lift it up. There we go. Wrap it around the pin. Nice. Oh, look at this. Look at all these, look at these super chats coming. Dana, thank you very much. Uh, because the chip is named. Chip is named. Chip is named. I'm not sure. I don't. I'm not sure. I get that. It could be something I said before, or um, or it could be something in the chat that I haven't seen. I'm going to. But thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Another super chat. I love it. I love it. <coughs> Dan is shaming my dollar amount. <laughs> Australian dollar is about thirty-two. So it's at the moment the Australian dollar is sitting at around about fifty-two. I think you know fifty high fifties. I think from memory. It's really low at the moment. Um, you know, it's ridiculously low. Um, for those other Australians that remember the heady times of the global financial crisis, when the Australian dollar was actually worth more than the US dollar, boy, oh boy, did we go crazy buying stuff from the States back then. Um, okay, I've got a little bit of hanging outy bit here I need to uh, chop off. Chop. 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 Thank you. Um, okay. Oh, World of Warcraft. Those sorts of trolls. Yes, 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 yes. Um, uh, isn't that counterclockwise? That way around. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, okay. It's, I, I've got a digital watch. <laughs> um, yes, you're right. That is counterclockwise. Sorry, my brain's, my brain's a little bit fried at the moment, isn't it? Too much flux. Um, Okay, message didn't work so well either, because uh, the chip is 3430129. Yes, that is the chip. And it is the 3430129, and I've got another one here. It doesn't work. And I've got another one here. It doesn't work. And a couple more as well. I keep thinking that someday someone might magically find a way of fixing them, so I hang on to them. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Two, three years ago. Yeah. Because oh, just obviously during the uh, GFC, Australia, uh, uh, US got pretty hard and Australia didn't get hit as hard. So um, a lot of people were investing in Australia. So that was why the dollar ended up getting so high. Now, um, not to mention the, all the mining and stuff, but anyhow, that's another story. Let's not bring that up. Um, got just checking to make sure that I haven't accidentally done any um, bridges when I did my drag solder, and also want to see that I've got some decent amount of solder 
on some of these pads that were kind of a little bit yucky. Now I still have some more trace repair to do for those who have been paying attention. Um, these two here, boom, boom, they're still unhappy. So I am going to attempt to suck all the solder out of those holes so that I can run a wire down them. Uh, right. Let's just see how we go. Suck him solder. This will be easier to access from the other side. And once again, I lift this up and I go, oh my goodness, I can't see them because I'm going blind because I'm old. Those two, I think I see them. I'm pretty sure it's these two. C51 and C54. Let's try it. Suck the solder out and see what happens. Suck the solder out. Yeah, I can actually see... I know I've been, see that the the way that solder looks on this uh, that C fifty one, it's it's uh, not smooth. That's because it's that's reacted to me heating it from the other side. So that's how I know it's that hole. Um, I know it once I look under the microscope. Anyway, before that I had no freaking idea. Right, I'm having trouble getting this on the table without it falling off. So let's do. There. Uh, I need to do my normal trick here when I'm trying to get solder out of a hole. I add some flux. I add some solder. And then I wick it again. Make sure there's plenty of solder on the wick and everything like that. Because solder likes to hang out with solder. Come on, come on, you. There we go. I'm just uh, oh, look at that. There would have been a component. There is. There is not meant to be a component here. Um, just uh, there are quite a few spots on these boards where they have no stuff. You think there should be something there, but there's nothing there. So. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, hurry up. Um, just, uh, just to that. Okay. Uh, right here we go. Oh, okay. And did I get here late? Well, sort of. Yeah. Um, it's been going for two hours. It looks like you turn it just in time to say hello to the chicken again. Um, I am getting very close to testing this after doing some repairs. So you could look at it from a perspective of saying I just arrived at the right time. Depending on whether you're someone who actually wants to see repairs um, or chickens, um, so or uh, just see the testing afterwards. So you could say you've arrived late or you've arrived just at the exact time, right time. Um, so I'm just going to say goodbye to the chicken. Oh my god, that time she got real stubborn. She said, No, 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 we've been through this four times today. I'm not going to fall for that again. <laughs> you guys are so stubborn. Bye bye. Ah, dear, oh dear. The chickens are factoring in my streams a little more than I would like these days. <clears throat> it used to be a fun novelty. Now it's becoming a pest. Um, so, I still haven't got the solder out of these holes here. So, what do I do? Do I use my um machine? Uh, or do I just try and feed some wire through it? Might just try and feed some wire through it with some heat. I uh, grab my 34 AWG wire. Good size for these. Fits in the hole. Reasonably durable. Still can just snap it nice and easily. Uh, and what I'm going to try and do, this might be folly, but I'm going to try and feed this through while applying some heat so that while that solder is molten, I can push it through. And it worked. You know why it worked? Because that's excellent. Hey, you can't see it because it's pointing straight up. It's out of focus. There's the tip of the wire. Oh, wrong way. Tip of the wire. Focus, 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 focus. There's the bottom of the wire. 
Okay, so that's enough for that one. Let's get another piece and put it through. We'll secure it on this side first, shall we? Let's shall, let's shall. Get some flux there. Get some soldering iron. Get some solder. What time is it? 2.30. Okay, that's not too bad. It's, uh, whoopsie. It's dentist time. Okay. Ooh, come on. Look pretty. <coughs> Let's chop the end of that off. <laughs> okay. Now, I have mentioned before, uh, my friend Jay, House of Moth, also one of the fellow Mac Yakers. He regularly provides uh, a little bit of, uh, what would you call it, um, um, peer pressure to get me and some of my colleagues to live stream. And right at this particular moment, he is applying some of that peer pressure to uh, another one of my colleagues to try and get them to stream when I'm finished. He can see that this one's coming to an end. And Jay obviously is looking for some further entertainment. Uh, Go through, go through, go through. Yep, getting that through. That's good. I don't need much of this to go through. I only need, you know, a few mils on the other side. So let's just uh, get this secured to this other side of this capacitor here. Just managed to get a little bit of fluff on the board as well. Isn't that nice? Always like a bit of fluff on the board. Doesn't matter too much when, uh, you know, you're going to put it in an ultrasonic cleaner afterwards, but. Good quality fluff. Look at it. Fluff. <clears throat> I do no such thing. Listen to the guilt. Listen to the guilt. You can just tell there's guilt there. Oh, uh, you know what it is, Jay? You encourage us to be our best. How about that? <laughs> Right, okay, so two more trace repairs to do here. I really should have cleaned these off before poking the wire through. But it doesn't matter. There we go. So, we're getting very close here now. Um, so there's just these two more and then we'll test it again. It still may not work, but you know, I'm feeling a hell of a lot better about it now than I was when I first pulled it out. I feel like I have tied up a lot of those. I, you know, if I don't, if this doesn't fix it, um, I might need to go in and actually start getting the multimeter out and testing every single pin here, which I don't want to do. <clears throat> All right, there's little bits of wire, and then we cover it with huge globs of flux, and then we get a little bit of solder, and then we get some tweezers, and we hold the wire in place while we solder it up. Sorry, I think the focus is a bit... There we go, that's not too bad. My focus is shocking. There we go. So that, I am fairly confident that one there is soldered on. And then we'll do this one. I've created a bridge there. Hold on. Come with me. Come with me, wire. There we go. Now... Uh, there is a bridge there. Uh, you may not be able to see it terribly well on the stream, but there is a bridge there. And generally the way I sort out a bridge is with just loads and loads of flux. Flux makes the uh, the, the solder usually more far more fluid, and then it, it's more likely to then just uh, uh, separate. It hasn't worked in this instance, so I'm going to get some wick, and I'm going to suck up some of that excess, um, because we do not want bridges. Bridges aren't good. I mean, bridges are great 
or if you're trying to get over a river or something, but they're not good between pins. There you go. Fine, fine work. <clears throat> okay, so, little snip, little snip. Whoops. I feel like I want this to be a little bit more soldered up the top of this pin. So I'm going to just add some more flux and some more heat and some more solder and some more tender love and care. <coughs> right. Did I bridge this again? There we go. As what I did before, I will do again, and that is I generally get this microscope and I roll it towards me till it's hanging off the edge of the desk so that I can then get this board and look at it, at it at, from an angle. And then we can see here that we've got those three trace repairs there. One, two, three. So it's the second one up, the third one up, and the fifth one up. Uh, so that's helped, this, helped to restore continuity to those that were stuffed up. There are a few others that would also lost continuity but we did that, we fixed that up just with a little bit of cleaning and a little bit of extra solar. So now we're just checking to make sure that we don't have any bridges, any accidental shorts or anything. Looks good. Looks good. Uh, okay, all right, let me just, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, we've got a stuff here. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, what are you planning on streaming back? I have a ton of compact Max that are in questionable condition. We're going to open them up. Yeah, that's be fantastic. I so want to watch that. I, I, I do have to go out after this, unfortunately, but I will be back. And I will be back in here doing more work, but I may not be streaming. Uh, why so late, Steve? Because uh, Steve doesn't go to bed very early. Um, okay, I'm going to aim for 17 minutes from now. If Bruce is still here, I'll just... Uh, prolong it again. Yeah, no, look, look, tell you what, Steve, I'll make sure I'm done in 17 minutes. Uh, okay, oh, my life. lost controller on life. It was just shot in the dark of time. Okay, you know, look, I think it'll be fine because at the end of the day, if this does not fix the problem, I'm not going to keep going with this. The next step I want to do with this is put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. And I don't want to do that while I'm live streaming because it sounds awful. It's really hard for me to concentrate. So um, let's go into the side view. Let's get a little bit of a zoom out happening here and let's grab our Mac Classic case and we'll try this again. Uh, the hope is that those little trace repairs that I've done might actually bring this back to life. Sorry, I was trying to grab that and stop the keyboard from falling down. Fire it up, fire it up. Okie dokie. Sorry, so short of desk space here. It's really crowded at the moment. I've got so many um, projects in progress. We've got a little pile of logic boards over there. Um, I'm sort of, yeah, it's getting a bit crazy. This is why I can't always live stream because sometimes what I'm doing here is just tying up loose ends, putting computers back together, and it just doesn't make for very good live streaming. Um, talking to myself. Okay, that's that. Let's get the keyboard cable for my super dirty keyboard, which I will clean one day, because apart from the grubbiness, it works beautifully. Uh, it's got uh, gunge on it. Uh, okay. Right, so, turning on the power. Um... Do you have a spare CC? Yeah, I've, I've actually got a couple of spare CC. They've all got the sound chip taken off them, but I do have a spare one. Um, all right, so it has been, it's connected to the keyboard. It is switched on to the power. I am about to press the button on the keyboard, and who knows, anything could happen. Well, it's better. We didn't get a chime, but we do have a green light this time. So we're definitely well on the way to having this sorted out, but we did not get a chime. Now we get this. Oh. Okay. Well, we don't have sound, but we do have the computer working. 
Now that probably means there's maybe one trace in there that's stuffed that I need to sort out. And I can just sort that out with, um, you know, a bit of a multimeter. Uh, I can just get in there and find out which one it is. But that's almost definitely just one trace. I mean, that fired up. No chime. Um, if I go in and play with the sound here. Oh, oh, that's the wrong keyboard. There we go. And where's my mousey? Mousey. Here, mousey. There it is. It's not plugged in. Piffle. Why is it not plugged in? Okay, so this is, uh, the hard drive is a customer's hard drive. This is a customer's computer. Although I do have a Color Classic here, my Color Classic has been mystic. So if I want to test a Color Classic board, I've either got to unmystic it or I've got to, uh, actually, someone was talking about doing this. I should do it. Make a little switch on the back where I can switch between mystic and not mystic. How good would that be? All right, mousey. Here's my mousey. Um, Let's go up here and go control panel. Soon. And we'll turn the volume right up. And we'll go beep. Uh, which one's that? Uh, so, yep. Uh, let's say Sumi. I can't remember. Is that, is that the one that goes Jen? I can't remember. Yep. I can't remember in to go. What's in to go? Um, and then, whoop. Hang on. Oh, I did hear that. It's super quiet. Ah. Now, that's an interesting one. I wonder if I plugged headphones into this, whether I'd get, the sound would work, because it could actually be the amplifier. I can test that, but we'll see. But anyhow, it definitely did. Uh, it is making noise. It's just making it incredibly quietly. So the next thing I'll do is actually put a set of headphones in and I'll test to see whether I can hear it with the headphones. If I can't, if I can hear it with the headphones, I know it's probably the amplifier. If I can't hear it with the headphones, I will, um, sorry. If I can't hear it with the headphones, uh, I know it's still on that sound chip. So let me just shut this little fella down. Good night. But anyhow, look. It didn't work before. It was totally dead. Now it does work. It boots. We know that board works. We know that, you know, at the end of the day, um, the chances are it's, you know, it's probably something we're very, very close to fixing. So I'm going to just pull the board back out again, and then I'm going to start saying all my goodbyes. I will just double check the chat. I will answer any questions if anyone has them, and then I will wrap it up, and then we can move across to Steve with his wonderful collection of Compact Max. I love watching Steve's streams when he's working on Compact Max. What I don't love is watching him pull apart the cases. Drives me bananas. <laughs> <coughs> You've got a case cracker now though, don't you, Steve? I think you can, you can use a case cracker now, so. Um, uh, okay, so let's just, um, have a look at this. I'm just trying to remember where the amplifier is on this. I'm sure I've replaced one before, or maybe I haven't. Is that it? Might be this one here. But anyhow, I've got to clean the board. Whatever I do next, uh, it's going to be um, it's going to be cleaning the board. The clean, getting this board clean is the very next step because again, that could resolve the sound issues. Um, so anyhow, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this in there. Uh, so very, very quickly. Um, so yeah, definitely not the speaker in this one. So I'm just jumping back here a little bit here. Um, yeah, I want custom Mac sounds alerts that are just Bruce doing impressions of them all. I, I don't do them anywhere near as well as Steve does. Steve does some great impressions of them. Um, okay. Uh, which OS? That OS was 7.1. Uh, in my opinion, if you're running an original Macintosh Color Classic, that's the best operating system to work with. If you have an Ethernet card in there, just install Open Transport 1.3. That'll allow you to get, you know, modern TCP IP, which you can then plug in. You know, you can connect it up to an FTP. You can transfer files back and forth. Obviously, we're not talking about watching YouTube or, you know, browsing Facebook, but we're just talking about being able to transfer files via Ethernet. So, um, so 7.1 is always the operating system I'd recommend for original Color Classic because they are so uh, insanely slow. 
Um, and uh, so all the headphone jack is, is shorter inside. Yes, it is possible. Having said that, I... I've never, I've never actually had that happen. I know it is always a possibility, but I've never actually had that happen with them. It's usually been something else. Um, and uh, da -da -da -da. I won't get to see all of Steve's streams. This is up from Sydney. Up from Sydney. Up from Sydney. So you're north of Sydney. Dana, are you, are you in Queensland somewhere? Um, sorry. Um, Okay, he has the cracker ready. Okay, so yes, well, this is true. If you look, Dana, if you have some repairs to be done, yep, get get your sister to drop them in. Come on, you know that's what I'm here for. Um, uh, okay, All right. just just checking up on here. Uh, Okay, one from Sam. I color classic has eight point one. This, uh, I would not put eight one eight point one on a color classic. Never in a million years. Um, maybe on one that's been mystic, I suppose. But uh, best way to file transfer yet yeah, using FTP. It's the easiest thing. It's the file transfer protocol hasn't changed. It's been around for ages. You can run an FTP server on a Mac. Uh, you can then dump files into a folder and then you can access them via an FTP client like Fetch running on these old computers. What I do, it just makes life so much easier. Uh, and of course, the Color Classic has a floppy drive on it, so I can use it as an intermediate Mac. It has a SCSI, you know, a SCSI connection, so I can I can get stuff on my modern computer, put them on my FTP server, copy them across onto this. I can then move them onto a SCSI disk if I need to move them to a, uh, anything else. I can put them on a floppy disk if I if I need to make someone install a disk or something like that. I can do it all on the Classic here, um, you know, with the floppy disk. So in here. Uh, up to Bathurst from Sydney. Okay, that, Bathurst, yeah, okay, that's not far away. I'm sure we have talked about the fact that you're from Bathurst before, but I do forget this stuff, so I apologise. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Dana's out there where we have the, uh, the, the fancy car rates, the, uh, the touring cars out there, Bathurst. Um, okay, so David, thank you. Uh, Michael, thank you for watching. Charlie, Dana, Steve. Everyone, yeah, I, I'm sorry if I haven't mentioned everyone's name, but thank you to everyone for watching. I'm glad you actually did get to see this start up. Uh, as usual, if I have, if I get this working and the sounds all fine and everything, I will usually put an update on my Brankus Creations Facebook page. So please jump onto my Brankus Creations Facebook page and like it. I am going to be doing a giveaway fairly soon, and one of the requirements of entering that giveaway will be going and liking my um, Brankus Creations Facebook page. So. May as well just get in on it early and go and do it now. So um, uh, thank you, folks. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. I appreciate your time uh, hanging around for such a long time. I think it's been like, you know, two and a half hours or something stupid on that. Um, and, uh, and I will see you at the next stream. I could well be streaming again tomorrow. We'll see. It just depends on how I fit everything in. As I say, I've got lots of work on at the moment. I want to try and share as much of it as I can. So thanks, folks. Uh, um, thank you for watching, all of you, and I will see you at the next one. Bye now.